Hello and welcome to another episode of The Grind Bin. I'm Mike Wood. I'm Chris Mann. And I'm Randall Sylvie. Yep, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how he found his way. Randall, you're here. <laughs> we must have left the door unlocked. I never left, actually. Yeah, he's just been sitting around for the past few episodes, <laughs> trying to get a word in edgewise with Chris and I here. Uh, yes, Randall from the Grolix Podcast has joined us again for this special Vaniversary, the one-year anniversary Vaniversary of the Grindbin Podcast, where we've decided to go full circle and cover the first movie we ever covered on this podcast, 1977's The Van. And we'll be doing this year after year after year after year. Bobby, gas that fucking van. <laughs> I gave a girl a ride in the wagon. She crawled in and took control. She was tired, cause her mind was a dragon. I said, get some sleep and dream of rock and roll. Cause like a picture, she was laying there. Dancing off ahead. She woke up and took me by the hand. She's gonna love me in my Chevy van, and that's all right with me. Bonjour, Levin. This is your fan, Michael Tanner. I want to wish you a happy anniversary. You know, I don't remember how I found you guys, but it was probably a retweet from another podcast on Twitter, so those actually do work. Uh, my first episode was The Lunch Wagon, and I, I was hooked. Keep up the good work, guys. And if I may throw out another suggestion, I know I give you guys a lot of suggestions on Twitter, but the 1989 movie, The Banker, um, is kind of like what if Mikey grew up to become a, a rich banker. It's pretty amazing. I suggest you guys check it out. All right. Happy anniversary. Hey, guys. It's Sean. I was calling to say happy anniversary. It's been a really great year. You guys do a really good job with the podcast it's been seems like it just gets better every uh every episode i think that uh i can't really wait for some of the other stuff i know you probably got cooked up i do wish that the fake daddy profile would come back that that was hilarious but other than that i can't complain you guys keep up a good job it's uh it's really a pleasure to listen to it every week i really look forward to it Hey, gentlemen, Mike Murphy here from the Badasses, Boobs, and Body Counts podcast. That's BB and BC. Wait, BB and BC podcast.com. I don't know the own URL on my website. Hey, Sean Thompson reminded me you guys are coming up on your one year anniversary. Congratulations. I know it takes a lot of work, and you guys are dedicated. So, happy anniversary. Have a good one. Chuck Rodriguez here, and I just wanted to take a minute to. Wish the grind bin a very happy anniversary. Uh, I came on board probably with the first episode I remember listening to. I think, or it really got my attention was uh, Savage Streets, which is one of my you know favorite films. And I caught every episode prior to that, and, and every episode since, and it's been a blast. And it's been a pleasure to know you guys. Who actually, you know, thank you for letting me contribute uh, to the website with reviews and it's just been great uh, fun to listen to uh, especially the, 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 the worse the movies are the better your show tends to be <laughs> so that's always uh, a plus and and just for this you guys know I did watch actually sat down and watched the band finally just preparation for part two of your band anniversary shows so I'm looking forward to hearing that and I'm looking forward to a whole other year of good, bad, terrible movies, so <laughs> it's going to be great. And again, uh, happy one year of anniversary, and here's some many more. Hey, Grunting Podcast, happy anniversary. Who would have thought a podcast based on spoiling terrible movies with cackling hosts laughing at their own terrible jokes would last this long? I didn't. Mike and Chris, you sadistic freaks, need to get outside more and let your DVD player have a break. See you soon. Hello, Mike. Chris, fellow Grindhouse fans, this is David, friend of the show from Perth, Western Australia, calling in to wish you a happy anniversary. I cannot believe I've been listening to your show for 12 months. There have been highs, there have been lows, there has been distress, and there's been great joy. It's been quite a ride. 
As is customary for these kind of anniversaries, I've gone through and done some maths. And it looks like you've posted 51 podcasts over the last 12 months. Adding up the numbers, I have spent 87.2 hours listening to your crap. I've also spent 68.4 hours watching some of the best and some of the worst movies in history. Of course, there was two that I couldn't make it all the way through, but I watched Dolomite about 10, maybe 12 times, so I'm just going to average it out. It comes to about 155.5 hours. Wow, that's a lot. If you work out a 38.5 hour week at work, I've spent four work weeks in the last 12 months listening to your show and watching the movies. So if that's not commitment, I don't know what is. I'm going to go now. I, I have to reassess my life. Good luck, guys, and I can't wait to hear you too. We made love in my Chevy van and that's all I Well, yet, yeah, Chris, you said year after year, we'd like to announce now this is the last episode of Grindbin. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. One year. It's been great. Yeah. See y'all later. We're, Fuck off. We're going to go out on a high note. <laughs> that note is the F note for Fuck You. <laughs> wow. I, no. w- w- <laughs> surprise, Randall. Surprise. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> this is how it was going to go. <laughs> No, no, we're not going anywhere. I thought I'd give uh, the one diehard fan of ours a heart attack. A heart so. attack, oh yeah. <laughs> but it's it's crazy. It's It's been a year. A lot can happen in a year, and we are grateful for all of you guys, whether, you know, those voices that you've heard and the voices that we have not heard and the voices we have yet to hear. Uh, we thank you deep down, and we can't wait to, you know, hear the straight arrows horn right around your streets echoing. <laughs> Door is open, ready for you to jump in. You just hear that little in yeah. the distance. Yeah, that Sammy John strum and that little poof of <laughs> little little uh, strands of ginger hair left yeah. behind, ready to take you away and never let you go ever again. <laughs> uh, before we get into it, Randall, do you remember the first episode you listened to? I'm just wondering which one you might have come on. I think it was. I was trying one. to. I was trying to recall that earlier. It was either um, the one with the B women. Oh, okay. Major or... the B girls. I bet it was that one. I think it was that one. So you were with us from almost the beginning. Yeah, yeah I was real, just, real far back. I was trying to remember because I wasn't sure when I came on when I yeah when I started listening to the show. But I do recall I didn't have to do much catching up to get up to current at the time. So yeah, it was it's I, it's been a while. Well, thanks for listening, Randall. Yeah, and thanks for joining us for the anniversary because uh, we really enjoyed your last uh, theory about where Bobby and Devito <laughs> fit in. But then I don't know if we included this in the episode, but you had confessed to us that you had actually never seen the van. I hadn't even seen it. I would, yeah, I was working on a uh, your guys's like the picture you guys painted in my brain of the van, and um, but I've seen it now. Uh, so what do you think yeah, after that... seeing it? Do we do it justice? Because I have an opinion uh, that's... I certainly have an opinion about it. I want to hear yours, though. <laughs> I... Okay, you do do it justice? I think Bobby is a... F- uh, okay, I'll put it this way. You guys would always do... Okay, you, when you do the van segment at the end of each episode, um, oftentimes the, the tagline is, you know, the... Uh, <laughs> ginger kid that tries to rape women in the back of the van and and i was like i was like yeah that's probably a little bit of hyperbole it's not (laughs) it's not bobby is far creepier than than i had imagined (laughs) you know that's the thing is after watching this for the eighth time or whatever it is now (laughs) just the other night i don't think we uh I don't think we underplay it at all. Like, no, I think, no, no, uh, it's accurate. It's right on the nose. <laughs> right on the nose. I think, if anything, we undersell how yeah. much of a rapist Bobby really is. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I was watching this and being like, no, this man, it, this is, multiple laws have been broken within the first 10 minutes of mm-hmm. this movie. <laughs> Bobby should be in jail. He's the reason the rape whistle was invented. Yeah, I mean, he should be, he should be locked behind bars or uh, chemically castrated. Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> you kidding? He'd still try. This man should not be allowed out in public, yeah. especially with that van. Yeah, give him the Hannibal Lecter treatment. <laughs> we'll be all better off. So, guys, let's get into the movie. Before we get into it, let's take a listen to the trailer. And uh, just a warning, everybody, it starts loud. Bobby! When you can't make it, you can go fun trucking in the foxiest four-wheel moving violation on rubber, the van. Let me show you around. What a bad van. 
mirrors. Hey, hey, hey! With Bobby, who kind of likes Sally, it's fantastic. The Van, rated R. That's all you need, that's all you get. And just like the first episode we did, when it says, with Bobby, who kind of likes Sally, that does not describe the movie whatsoever. No. So. Bobby, who kind of does things to Sally, <laughs> and vice versa. Like, who's, is that, how's that supposed to like entice you to go see a movie? It's like, it's about a guy, and he, you know, he kind of likes this girl. <laughs> so here we get into the trivia, guys. Uh, the vansploitation mm. is what this movie comes out of. Now, that is an actual term mm-hmm. for movies in the 1970s. We went through br- uh, exploitation right. the other day. But vansploitation is also a j- subgenre of exploitation films mm. uh, in the 1970s where they use this term for vans are the, quote, key element to the plot. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than this. Trust me. There's more than this. They often feature comedic stories about college-age people. The short-lived genre emerged in the United States in the early 1970s, exploiting the popularity of vans with young people. Uh, It was very popular into the mid to late 1970s, when the van came around, 1977, and disappeared in the early 1980s, probably with vans, when it became known as, don't let your children go in those. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Van exploitation <laughs> films were originally made mostly for young audiences. Blue Summer, 1973, is credited as the first film of the genre, which continued with films like The Van, 1977, and they put Van Nuys Boulevard, 1979, <laughs> really? as a Van exploitation movie. Huh. The latter having been called, quote, the most technically competent Van exploitation film. I'm going to disagree. I don't know if that's a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> Technically competent. Like, go. We've covered Van Nuys Boulevard on this podcast. Yeah. I believe it's like episode nine or ten. Yeah. Um, sure, it's it's technically competent, I guess, but I wouldn't call that a compliment. Yeah, it's, it was competent in that the cameras worked, the, the boom mic worked, you like, know, yeah. the lights worked. <laughs> if you were in a review for a movie and they go, well, it certainly looked like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the movies made, this is one of them. <laughs> so now we get into the trivia about this movie in particular let me give you guys some taglines Mm. for this movie okay so these are the various taglines that were pasted on uh posters for this movie and plastered up in uh seedy bowling alley bathrooms uh strip clubs and outside of the drive-in where this was playing yes now you're gonna like this one chris bobby has a new machine and everyone wants a ride machine okay here's the next one a teenage boy has two passions in his life girls and his van well that's just very uh, literal thank you yeah (laughs) one please yeah (laughs) oh that sounds like it relates to me yeah (laughs) okay here eight track waterbed mirrored ceiling shag everything shag dot 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 anywhere should say anyone too. Shag dot 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 anywhere with an exclamation point. Mm. Technically, yeah, he does. So, hmm. yep. Last one. Bobby couldn't make it till he went fun, fun trucking. And those are all the taglines. Uh, Randall, would that get you in the theater? Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, okay. some of those were terrible. <laughs> Most of them were terrible. <laughs> Well, it's it's crown quality taglines, you know. They don't write these until Mr. Crown wrote these on a cocktail napkin and handed yeah. it to an intern and was like, "Just put these on posters." And he's like, "I can't really read this." <laughs> That's what they could decipher last Just minute. Just shut the fuck up and put it on there. <laughs> uh, okay, here you go. The poster is just like a Xerox of that napkin on the actual. <laughs> Now, we covered this in the first episode, but uh, I don't know if you know this one, Randall. Even though the song we constantly hear throughout the whole movie by Sammy Johns, uh, oh, who yeah. we will we discussed in, in length in multiple podcasts about how he died by being either having a stroke or getting electrocuted by a lamp. The song is Chevy Van, but the van in the movie is a Dodge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I noticed so that. that. <laughs> I noticed that right away. <laughs> so I guess uh, they couldn't get Sammy to change the lyrics. No. That, sh- no. <laughs> That van had left a lot long ago. <laughs> Can you imagine they show up on set and they're like, what do you mean you got to dodge? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we got fired that day. What the fuck are we going to do with this? The song says Chevy. <laughs> we already recorded it. <laughs> okay. 
despite having prominent co-starring billing. Oh, God. Danny DeVito is in this movie for seven minutes and a total of six scenes. Which That's is, it. Yeah, hilarious, because all of like, the post-Van era marketing of this has Bill him as the star. And a lot of yeah. it has him, like like we said, alluded to last year, it was a Cape Fear style artwork of his face. Oh, yeah, we'll else. put up the posters again on the website. They yeah. are crazy. Yeah. Including that one we just looked up before we started recording this show. Uh, the Spanish version of this uh, movie is the title is La Nanas de Trapas, mm-hmm. uh, which we couldn't, I didn't have time to translate, but I imagine something uh, it's, like it's Rates sense, Van. It stands for Herpy the Love Van. <laughs> Herpy the love van. <laughs> Herpy the rape van. Uh, which has a picture, like a cartoon picture of Bobby sticking out the window of his van yeah. uh, with a big net like he's going to, and he's chasing after a woman carrying an ice cream cone for some reason. Mm. And the van is leaping into the air and has a its tongue sticking out like it's going to eat the woman. Yeah. Or lick the ice cream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's licking something, that's <laughs> yeah. for sure. Can you imagine if this, if Cran had the budget? If that was in the original script, to have the van come alive and like <laughs> chase women with a mouth and a tongue? Well, I do have a theory that the van does become an actual character in this movie at one point. Yeah, because it, somebody because it refer- referenced it as. Somebody does reference this van as that, that van. van. <laughs> okay, guys, now here's a big one. Do you know anything about who designed this van? Uh-huh. Is it George Beers? Chris, you are correct. George Barris, an American designer Mm -hmm. and builder of many famous Hollywood custom cars, built the straight arrow as well as a bunch of vans that were in this movie. So Van Killer and a bunch of vans at Mm VanCon he designed. And he is most famous for designing the Munster Coach and the 1966 Batmobile. That's right. Oh, nice. So what do you think the notes were that they gave him for this movie? Oh, God. We want a van... That, uh, well, I guess AIDS wasn't invented. So. <laughs> <laughs> that screams AIDS. <laughs> that screams <laughs> rash. <laughs> Thrush. I can't imagine the notes that they gave to the, <laughs> this poor guy to make. We want a van where a boy would go around to a pizza parlor and his goal is to get the girl in the van by any means necessary. <laughs> And keep her there. <laughs> I think he nailed it. It's, it's huge. And yellow. Caution. And there's arrows. Go away. Stay He's away from this. Caution colors. <laughs> Randall, you're right. It basically is a fucking police tape. <laughs> This is basically just a caution tape as a van. It's fucking... <laughs> so it's... we want the girls to go in, but we also want them to know, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is fucking CSI on wheels. <laughs> Call your parents is. before you get in that one. <laughs> Tell, Let somebody know where you are. <laughs> Leave breadcrumbs if you have to. Okay, last uh, last little be- uh, piece of trivia about the movie, but I have other stuff about locations. Here we go. The box office for this movie, now, you can't find the exact numbers, guys, but believe it or not, this movie was a rousing success no. for Crown International. Two sources online, one that claims that this movie made $4.5 million in the box office, which would be a huge success for yeah. the minuscule budget. Yeah. And the other one says that it made $19 million, <laughs> which I said would be... Insane. I'm gonna believe the four. I'm gonna believe the four million one. Yeah, so we'll go four point five million, which is still crazy enough to get these uh, toy cars made and a spin or a spiritual sequel to it. Yes, it is listed as the sequel because uh, the last episode we covered, part one of the anniversary, Mm was 1978's Malibu Beach, which is a real pile of crap. Mm -hmm. Uh, Has the I don't know origin story or continuation story of Dugan, which nobody asked for. So uh, go check that one out or not. Yeah. Now, here's some interesting ones, though, guys. I looked up some of the locations for this movie. 7910 Catella Avenue in Stanton, California, is where the pizza place in this movie no. was. Now, that is not in L.A. That's actually right outside of Huntington Beach in Orange County. Oh, my God. Um, unfortunately, the pizza place is gone, but the parking lot is now an abandoned food for less, uh, and the property is currently available for sale. So Chris and I will be moving our grind bin studios. Yep. <laughs> moving right <laughs> on amazing in. amazing would that be if you could actually With the straight that. arrow right outside. <laughs> 
I want to reopen the pizza place. Go, yeah. Oh Come on in, God. high school kids. You can drink here. <laughs> we serve underage kids all day long. Okay, now here's what's even crazier, guys. Literally right next to this location is the Stanton City Hall and the police station. <laughs> So within five feet of that <laughs> that pizza place, where all sorts of crimes are being committed, yeah. is the Stanton Police Department. Oh my god! So I thought that was a nice ironic little. No, twist. I love that. I'm so excited that I can literally we can just drive there. This I really want to go there, do a field trip, take some pictures of the old abandoned. Food yeah, for less. do some video. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> This is historic. You have no idea. This is like, you know, sacred <laughs> well, grind bin ground. Chris, I got some better news for you. Yeah. 11701 Whittier Boulevard, Whittier, California, which is where the car wash is located. Now, it's not the same car wash, but it is a car wash oh. still, and it is called Pacific Auto Spa, and All it right. is located in the exact spot that DeVito's car wash was located wow. in this movie. Is that half door still there where he kind of <laughs> takes boogie bets and... It's a much uh, nicer looking building now. So oh, so I can't, a... I can't like kick down the bathroom door after no. drinking castor oil. I hear they're still wine. taking bets, though. <laughs> I hope so. And last bit of trivia. Now, you guys are going to... I'm about to drop a big bomb oh, on everybody. Shit. Okay. Now, we've complained for years, a year, that this, <laughs> <laughs> that this movie literally makes no sense and that the plot just develops and ends and it seems like we're missing something. Mm-hmm. Apparently, we are all getting royally screwed. The DVD version of this film is only 86 minutes long, but the theatrical one was 92. No. We are missing six minutes of this movie, and I demand to know what's in it. Yeah. I mean, I, I question, do we have the actual birth of AIDS? Do we have more <laughs> VanCon? Longer sex scenes? Bobby's elusive sister? Or... <laughs> Do we find out how DeVito <laughs> gets that money? money. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Like, I picture a scene where DeVito is wearing a blindfold and a, a revolver up to his head playing Russian roulette <laughs> with some guys. <laughs> we, we are missing six minutes of this. Yeah, a lot well, can I mean, go down if, in the fucking van world in six minutes. A lot. Think, think about the fact that DeVito's only in seven minutes. Anything could happen in six minutes. That's what I'm saying. Six yeah. minutes is a lot of movie. Yeah. In the crown world, that could be a sex scene or it could be a plot. A major plot. Yeah. Like a whole, whole three-act structure. Yeah. <laughs> so now, everybody, I'm going to say this right now. Oh, Our shit. goal in the next year is to find this six minutes. Crown International still has an office in Santa Monica. I will be going there, mm. and I will be asking for my six minutes back. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really, really want to find out what we're missing. Yeah. Do you think someone there would know? Well, I'm going to call, Yeah. and we know what happens if you call. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hear that Crown song. And we're going to hear Crown International, where every woman has a price. <laughs> and I'm going to go, hey, what happened to the six minutes of the van? <laughs> And they'll just hang up on me like they've done dozens of times yeah. before. He's probably a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we'll do a, a quick overview here of the crew. We really got to get into the movie here. Yeah. Uh, Sam Grossman, the director. This was the only movie he ever directed. Uh, he went to the AFI Film Institute, though. Uh, he directed two shorts and just this movie. And I guess just called it quits. Like, well, I've gone out on top. <laughs> How could I ever top this movie? Um, instead, he started to privately compile collections of old-time radio shows, uh, a subject upon which he was an expert. Hmm. Uh, he contributed many of these to both university collections and several online OTR websites. Uh, he unfortunately passed away in 1999. Now, do you think that A-track was part of the collection? Oh, or? my God. <laughs> I think that A-track was played at his funeral. <laughs> what do you think he just, Sam just sent something over a university and they're like, uh, Sam, <laughs> we don't know what you've sent. He goes, oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've covered them in the last episode. Robert J. Rosenthal and Celia Susan Coletto were the writers of this movie. They also wrote Malibu Beach. Yeah. Now, Randall, can you believe that this movie was co-written by a woman? No, no. And I knew that <laughs> watching it, and I, my mind was blown. Do you think she just got overruled at all? Oh, I think <laughs> yeah. she... There are two versions of the script. One is <laughs> the version that she didn't know was going to get made in, into this movie. <laughs> I feel like the script was submitted to Crowd, and Mr. Crowd himself sat there and just, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's, just, it's like 90% black highlighter, or black marker, I'm sorry, over whatever she wrote. 
like instead of like the the actual like love scene where Bobby tries to uh, connect with a woman, he mm. just crosses it all out and writes <laughs> rape. <laughs> <laughs> Quote: Get to the goods. <laughs> so here we got the cast: Stuart Goetz, who plays Bobby. Yeah. Mostly known before this movie just for being in an episode of The Brady Bunch where he was in the episode where Marsha got hit in the nose by a football. Uh, Bobby was in that famous episode. Really? Uh, well, Stuart. His name's not Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> was in the, Bobby always, and the Brady Bunch. He'll always be Bobby to us, Stuart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he only has 11 credits as an actor. Uh, his only other movie was Record City, which was made in 1978, uh, where he played the character Rupert which is mm. interesting because he uses that name in this movie. Yeah. Uh, it was basically just uh, Empire Records before that movie oh, came wow. out. It's about people working at a record store. Mm. Uh, we'll get back to that movie because there's another connection in it. Uh, he is much more well-known now for his work as a musician on tons of TV shows and movies. Now, you guys, I mean, this is staggering. He has 79 credits in the music department of TV oh, and shit. movies, including Music for The West Wing, one Tree Hill, <sighs> the movie Mimic, uh, The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, Rocco's Modern Life, Captain Planet, The Real Ghostbusters, Camp Candy, and some episodes of Alf. <laughs> Those Heavy are the ones hitter. I wrote down. Yeah. Heavy hitter. Stuart is uh, still working today in Hollywood. He, he makes tons and tons of music. So you can hear his stuff in literally every cartoon from the 90s. Yeah. Is there a way to get a hold of him? I don't know. We'll see. I would mm. love to have him on this show, and yeah. uh, he can explain himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, a man who needs no introduction, Danny DeVito, who plays Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest before this movie, believe it or not, and then somehow got convinced to be in the van, I guess. Uh, he was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest more than this, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for damn sure. Uh, he was also in the movie Car Wash, believe it or not, but mm. they deleted all his scenes. Do you think those deleted scenes were just put into the van? <laughs> yeah, that's what that's how this movie came about, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got we got a hold of some. Uh, you ever heard of this Devito character? <laughs> we got a hold of some scenes from another movie they're not using. Maybe we can kind of fit it in. <laughs> It's just one big like patchwork of a film of DeVito in a car wash. I would not put it past Crow. No, I would not. That's the that's the six minutes they cut out of this movie. Yeah, right? that's what I'm thinking too. So Harry Moses, who plays Jack, his friend, 31 credits, mostly TV, some other exploitation movies. The only other one I have there was 1978 Sweater Girls. He played a character, Ooh. Pete. Now, here's an interesting thing. He stars in that movie. Here's the synopsis. A group of teenage girls forms a club, the Sweater Girls, to preserve their virginity. And I'm guessing because it's made in 1978 that it uh, doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> he was in 1980's Happy Hooker Goes to Hollywood, where he played a cop. Uh, and then he pretty much did TV after that. He's still acting in small roles in movies and shorts. Uh, mm. He's still around. Uh, Deborah White, who plays Tina mm -hmm. in this movie. Um, which uh, originally I said she was uh, shrewish in the first episode, but you know what? I uh, I have to. I've taken Tina's side. <laughs> <laughs> I feel real bad for this girl. Yeah, she just gets it over and over and over again <laughs> and again and again. I mean, I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Uh, Believe we talked about her actually in the first episode, but uh, I'll just say she was acting up until 1994. She has 38 credits, mostly TV. But uh, I did notice the one notable thing uh, was she played the mom in Monkey Trouble from 1994. No, really? Yeah. So that was an interesting. Oh one. wow! Okay. And guess what? She was also in that movie Record City with Stuart Goetz. Oh, the trail. So you might have to check that one yeah, out. Yeah, Grindman All Star. Now, Grime Bin All-Stars, I'm just going to name them all off. Marcy Barkin, who plays Sue. She was in Chesty Anderson, U.S. Navy. Stephen Oliver, who plays Dugan, mm -hmm. was in The Van and Malibu Beach. Beach. Bill Adler, who plays Steve, is in Van Nuys Boulevard. Um, awesome. Malibu, Malibu Beach, Beach yeah. The Van. I don't know if any other ones, but it, quite a bit of movies. Yeah. Uh, Connie Hoffman, who plays Sally, also a Grime Bin All-Star. She was from Chesty Anderson, U.S. Mm -hmm. Navy. So that's it for the cast. Guys, because this is a special episode, though, I tracked down a few reviews, some choice reviews for you. Uh, we haven't done this in a while, but I got some reviews from IMDb. You guys want to hear them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start with the title, One of the Greatest Movie Lines Ever, 10 out of 10, from C.A. Skunk in 2006. This was written. Okay. It wasn't me. It was er, my twin brother, Rupert. 
Bobby says to Dugan when confronted about being over at Sally's place. I have used this line dozens of times over the years. No one has yet to believe it, though. What? (laughs) How is that one of the greatest movie lines ever? That's the line? (laughs) That's the line. Out of all the lines. Of all the lines in this movie, it was my twin brother, Rupert. I was, I thought and this it would guy's be like... going around town saying this to everybody, <laughs> just laughing his ass off. <laughs> 30 years this guy's been using this fucking yeah. line. <laughs> well, I think that's probably how he gets out of convictions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guess. maybe that's where nobody believes in Chris when the cops <laughs> come knocking. <laughs> Uh, then it's been working until DNA samples started coming on the scene. <laughs> Sir, there is no Rupert. The, the semen samples are a match for you. Like, they're just... <laughs> okay, the next one. Mm-hmm. Oh, what great memories. 10 out of 10 oh, from I... D-Bad 06. I love when they have these like personal sentimental attachments to these films. Oh, like, Chris, this one oh, you will not a, believe. It's a doozy, huh? Now, I fear for this man. And I, f- I feel that, so this was written over 10 years ago. He mm. might be away from society. <laughs> In 1979, I was a boy of 12 years old. Oh, boy. My parents had just got the home box office, which is, was pretty new to our neighborhood. As a 12-year-old boy, this was the first time I saw boobs on television. I will never forget the joy of those times. Racing vans. The total ass wipe with the baddest van, the waterbed, the smoking of herbs, the hot 70s chicks, the making love in my Chevy van song. It was all so new to me. A complete movie with all of the memories you could hope for. I own it. And I enjoy it about once a year. When I watch this movie, it makes me want to get my skates with four wheels, not in a straight line. (laughs) Go to the park and hunt down some babes with feathered hair. Truly great memories of young adolescence. I thought that was terrifying. And a pocket full of chloroform. (laughs) Could you imagine seeing this as a 12-year-old? Oh, it it probably would be the best movie ever as a 12-year-old, yeah. No, it's one thing to see Terrorvision when you're 12, but the van? Yeah. Oh, God. (laughs) No, it would probably spawn a whole generation of van wannabes, you know, Bobby wannabes, Bobby, you know, Wannabes, if you will. Yeah. But Baba I, Bees. Yeah, Baba Bees. Baba but bees. Um, I think as they came of age and as the times <laughs> evolved. Chris, obviously this man never came of age. No. Because he's still... <laughs> if you fucking mentioned roller skates to this guy, he will slap you across the face. <laughs> Four wheels, not in a straight line. Roller blades, yeah. <laughs> All right, last one I have is actually a bad review. Terrible, two out of ten by Lord of Terror when terror is capitalized, from Australia of 2008. This film was abysmal, and not in the good way, as some have claimed. First off, the main character is a very unattractive gingerman. (laughs) Gingerman. He put it as one word. (laughs) Second, WTF is going on with this van love. The plot, basically, is boy wants sex, so buys a van, which in fairness is quite cool. Unbelievably, given that he looks like a newt, He scores with lots of chicks, and he fails with some. Then he scores with a really hot chick and realizes he loves this dowdy bird who played hard to get. Then he races with the hot chick's boyfriend, and he tips his van, at which point Danny DeVito saves the day, although he didn't need to because in tipping the van, the ginger kid crossed the line first. I give this two stars as I'm willing to assume that there's some sort of 70s vanning some culture I'm not getting, and also because there's some 70s boobage too. Yeah, I guess that's right. You know, I guess it'd be of the times to appreciate this film, like all crown films, but for me, it's like, it's, it's just so bad. That's why I admire it. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a one of a kind. I, yeah. I wouldn't say it's two out of ten. I I think he'll come around. You know, yeah. you, all you got to do is watch it once a year. Get yeah. out those skates. Because I just not watched a straight it. line, Chris. Not no. in a fucking straight. No, line. I, I watched it today for the second time ever in my life, and it got better the second time around. Yeah, I watched it for the eighth time yeah. last night, and it got. Eh, I wouldn't say better. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use the word tolerable. I can't believe you've seen yeah. this eight times. Yeah. Oh, I, I had a class where I watched this movie. This is like that, literally that was, in college. I had to watch this movie. That was for the a class. class that got you started in the Grindhouse film. Yes, it was. The yeah. uh, class I took on cult film in college started mm. with this movie. Wow. And boy, that was an interesting discussion afterwards. Yeah. Uh, there was a discussion? 
Yeah, it was a real class. This about, wasn't about what this I chose, movie. Chris, About this movie. Yes, about this How did movie. that go? <laughs> Some kid raised his hand and he goes, what about AIDS? <laughs> Another girl goes, and where did DeVito get that money? <laughs> Some girl just walked out. <laughs> what about consent? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Crown taught the class. So he... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we begin, guys. Ooh. The Crown logo appears. <sighs> Sammy Johns wafts through the air. Goosebumps. The Chills. Bobby and that fucking Around smile of his drive around to LA. Not in the van yet, but in his little convertible. Laughing away. He has that weird maniacal smile and his yeah. giggle, never stopping. Mm-hmm. And he flashes back to the girl of his dreams, apparently. Literally of dreams. Yeah. Because he's having, I guess, either either Bobby like suffers from massive like head trauma, like some sort of brain tumor-esque seizures that gives him visions. Yeah. Or he's... Uh, I I'm I think we might be dealing with the Jacob's Ladder type scenario. I think you're right. Yeah, you brought this up not long after we did this episode that, a year ago. That this is all just like a dream sequence. Too. Yeah, I think it it might be. Uh, so he thinks he dreams about Tina giving a speech for some reason, mm-hmm. uh, a valedictorian speech. So she's the valedictorian, and he's the uh, resident class rapist. Yeah, and he's like imagining her naked behind this lectern. With this nice soft light in front of her. Yeah. Uh, and then we cut to Bobby, like, listening to her talk. And did you guys notice he's kind of like, it almost looks like he's sitting there jacking himself off on the stage. Because he's got this weird, like, distant look. And he's like, hey, hey, <laughs> like, bobbing his head all weird. Yeah, you're right. He does. <laughs> oh, and then we get the old gag where they almost kill the principal. Yeah. Okay, so they had to have gone there earlier before <laughs> set this up. <laughs> planned it you know like it wasn't inspected before you know the graduation by the plant foreman the custodian the you know nobody noticed this giant string that bobby's <laughs> holding in his hand for the whole speech yeah because he's holding like a giant rope right right like a rigging style rope <laughs> that he's fastened to one of the parts of the stage yeah and like you said yeah they must have set this up because you can't just like i don't imagine a stage would just pull off real easy with like one tug of a rope i know like one scrawny ginger arm <laughs> him and, him and his this friend arm. are there with a little jack like a jigsaw like before yeah. <laughs> trying to weaken the leg <laughs> i think davida was like faster bobby faster <laughs> And Bobby's a real prankster. Yeah. And then we get the first appearance of the and more man. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> what? out of nowhere, like what? So Randall, it was your first time seeing it. Were you just like confused as all hell when that stage got pulled, and then this man just shows up and goes and more? Yeah. The the and more really threw me because it it starts off it's so disjointed and weird and. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned the Jacob's, Jacob's Ladder thing because that's the only thing that really makes this movie make sense. <laughs> because there is a sex in that happens and it's almost like, I don't know if it was a dream or not. You know what? I I know what scene you're talking about. Yeah. A sex scene in this movie, yeah. right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was a dream or not. Yeah. Because now I'm starting to think that one of these scenes didn't happen. Right. Like I'm really, we'll that. get to it, but I, oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah, it didn't happen. I yeah. wrote that same thing down. Mm. I actually had to. I think I know what you're talking about. I actually had to rewind to see how we got into that scene. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> is this for real? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's what uh, Sam Grossman. Uh, he puts in these little nuggets, guys. He's a master <laughs> filmmaker. This is why he quit after this movie. <laughs> he went out on top. Yeah, you can't beat it. <laughs> You could study this movie for years. You could play it in a college class. <laughs> yeah. Right next, in there. Right next to Black Devil Doll. <laughs> you know, if I ever teach, like, film history at a college, I, I, Black Devil Doll and Quad Ed Zone will definitely be in the curriculum. <laughs> you can lock down the classroom. <laughs> oh, full volume. It's going to be me. I'm going to be the custodian at that point. I'm just going to, like, have the mop handle in the back of the class, like, locking the door from the outside. You're going to give me the signal. I'm going to wink. Yeah. <laughs> Grandskeeper man, what's he doing <laughs> in the class? So then we cut to uh, Bobby and Jack smoking a joint at school, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they go to the parking lot, and then Jack says something about how he woke up at a woke up in a garbage can behind a bar or something. Yeah, you know the old wild night. But then I love this part is that so they go down to Bobby's car. And they run down this little dirt hill, and Jack goes, whoa, like he's a five-year-old kid. 
Uh, and then he says something about how Bobby's going to get rid of this, quote, heap and get that van he's been, quote, raving about for eight years. And then I wrote, eight years? So since he was 10? <laughs> yeah, since, yeah, exactly. this since he was, since he was oh, 10. Oh, wait, wait, okay. Did these vans even exist <laughs> back then? Since he was fucking 10 years old, yeah. he's telling kids on the elementary school, when you just watch one day, I'm going to get a van. <laughs> They're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, he does call it his ballroom, which I'm not yeah. sure if he means that literally, like as a, like a like a ballroom, or that's some sort of euphemism. Oh, remember because there was a euphemism, euphemism in another film. She's like, "Yeah, I got balled by him. He or he balled me really yeah. good that yeah, night." Yeah, yeah, B know? girls. They yeah. use the, the term ball in yeah. a serious manner. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you think he means, ballroom, or like room to ball? I'm thinking room to ball. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. The, the you rea- don't think he's. Th- like, do you picture him, like, dancing? I don't in there? remember which chick he was talking to, but the reaction she had, I, I'm guessing he means two ball. Well, Tina, uh, Tina is terrified of Bobby this whole movie. So any reaction <laughs> right to anything so. he says is mostly like, oh, she's disgusted. Where is the exit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, How quickly can I get my mace? <laughs> the nearest pay phone. Is 911 a free call or <laughs> do I have to have change? <laughs> So then we go, guys. Uh, so eight years is going to come to fruition. But first, we get to a stoplight, right? Mm-hmm. And so Bobby pulls up to this stoplight, and it's a red light. And boy, who's sitting in that van across from parked right next to them, Chris, oh, in the stoplight? Sally Jensen. And boy, what a set, set of knackers. <laughs> this one night with her would satisfy me for a whole year. <laughs> Basically, Bobby stops at this stoplight, and mm-hmm. he stares at this woman sitting in the passenger seat of a van that's also stopped at a stoplight. Yeah. Okay? Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, like, people are behind him, and then the light turns green, and Bobby doesn't go because he's just transfixed on those knockers. Like, yeah. he cannot take his eyes off. Bobby, um, the rapist that Bobby is is, like, once he sees a woman, he just doesn't let go. Yo, he's the stereotype. <laughs> He's like a Terminator. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when the Terminator focuses in, he can't he can't let it go. No, he's a Sperminator. Right? <laughs> the Sperminator. When Bobby sees a woman, I wish we would have seen Terminator view from his face, like from his point of view. <laughs> <laughs> that red it just filter. Looks over, it just highlights the knockers and it just says <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> pursue pursue <laughs> so he just sits there he says his whole lines which chris was repeating sally johnson what a set of knockers what a piece boy i'd love to do her just once it would satisfy me for a whole year she's also sitting there with the window open definitely could within hear this ears, yeah within ears ear fall <laughs> and then the light turns green and bobby doesn't move he's just still sitting staring at yeah. her uh, and then, like, all the cars behind him get all pissed off, and they go around, and he's just still sitting there. The light turns red, and uh-oh, Dugan comes oh, back. Oh, boy. And he's carrying a box of pizza from that pizza place that they're always going to go to. Now, I got some questions, guys, and I didn't notice this the first time. Did Dugan just park his van in the middle of an intersection <laughs> and then walk into that pizza place? <laughs> I'm going to say yeah, because he's Dugan. Like, because I don't think he's parked. I think in the van's idling. I think like he really he was like, oh, red light, I'm going to go get a pizza, <laughs> and then just walked inside. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> because I also look, and there's an entire empty parking lot that he walks out of, and mm-hmm. I'm like, so instead of using the parking lot like a normal person, Dugan's like, eh, fuck it, just stop right here. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, can you watch the car? Yeah, because wouldn't it be like a lot further distance to walk all the way to the pizza joint, just park there? Yeah, it, it bothered me. This, yeah. It never bothered me before, but yeah. I was like, huh. So then we get uh, the old gag. So Dugan comes back, and they're going to race, but then they don't. Uh, and then there's that whole cigarette gag where we watch yeah. for like two minutes as they light their cigarettes. A cigarette can burn through leather. <laughs> and then Bob, yeah, Bobby throws a match in the back seat, and it, it catches fire, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then we see a, another little Jacob's Ladder flashback to a freckle love scene mm-hmm. where we just see a lot of Bobby's back, shockingly white and freckled back. And a little scratch. <laughs> and a little Shocking. scratch. I think that scratch was from someone struggling to get away. <laughs> You know, that makes sense, Chris. The reason he's got scratches on his back is from one of his victims. Yeah. Hey, come on. I like your hair. So Bobby doesn't drag him, uh, drag race him because he forgets to put the car in gear. Yeah. And then we just see them driving around for a while, and then they see these two girls. So Tina and Sue. This is where we get introduced to them formally. Mm-hmm. So Sue is just uh, going to be pursued by Bobby's friend. 
and Tina, uh, she just kind of exists in like this. Uh, this whole relationship that builds out of this movie is basically yeah. based out of convenience. Is like, uh, well, we're here. Yeah, <laughs> she's a side lay. <laughs> my, my friend fucked your friend. We might as well fuck. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, it's a know. mutual bang. You know. <laughs> We don't have anything in common. Literally nothing in common. Yeah. But, eh, you know. <laughs> a hole's a hole. <laughs> Do you think the original script was like, uh, you know, maybe Bobby was pursuing her more or something like that? And the notes were just like, no, 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 no. Don't worry about any of this relating or anything like that. A hole's a hole. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, the liner note on it's the side convenient. of the script. It's convenient. It's warm. <laughs> Go. <laughs> it's welcoming. It's embryonic. <laughs> So Tina does not want anything to do with these guys, right? So they pursue them, and, uh, well, they do tell them their car is on fire, so they put out the fire. Uh, That's their one deed for the day. (laughs) And then Tina drives away, right? And Sue's like, oh, why'd you leave? And Tina says, quote, it's hard to carry on a conversation with a pair of vegetables. And I write, I don't disagree. (laughs) Because... (laughs) Because most of what comes out of Bobby and Jack's mouths are like, Hey, uh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Pizza? (laughs) Hey, pizza van? Yeah. (laughs) Like studs? (laughs) Like somehow they graduated from college? Yeah. Or high school, I'm sorry. Well, how many times did it take them to graduate from that high school? Like senior year again was the best three years of their life. (laughs) But Tina says multiple times, she's like, you know, although they only got one thing's on their mind, I'm like, yeah, they do. These guys are literally, like, bottom of the barrel. It's like like Beavis and Butthead, (laughs) the movie. Like, they just force it. Like, you know, maybe this whole thing of, like, can an 18-year-old really drink in L.A.? Uh, You're right, Chris. Maybe it was the best three years of their life, and the high school's like, look, you gotta leave. Yeah. Like, we're gonna, we gotta pass you. Yeah. (laughs) This is them at 21, finally getting that diploma. (laughs) Please get the fuck out. So we're losing funding because of you guys. <laughs> Bobby, uh, you realize that all the girls in this high school are underage. <laughs> we, you know, we're, we're going to have to start calling the cops. Yeah. So Bobby drops off Jack, right? And he's getting, for some reason, Jack's car is getting towed. And then instead of helping his friend, Bobby just kind of does his, his blank stare and laugh and just yeah. drives off. And he's like, hey, hey, have fun. Fuck you. <laughs> and then we go to the car wash. Uh, so here we go, guys. Uh, we get introduced to two of our favorite people. One, Bill Adler. Yes. Trying to pry Danny DeVito, DeVito himself, out of a car, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, DeVito's, like, stuck. He's somehow, somehow DeVito got himself wedged, like, <sighs> some sort of child or animal into this car, like, under the drive shaft or something. Mm-hmm. Like, he's wedged himself in trying to teach them how to vacuum a car. Uh, and they're like trying to pull him out by his feet like it's some sort of cartoon. Right. Mm-hmm. And I write, I want to see the scene of DeVito getting wedged. Getting in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think this is part of the six I minutes think there, was, there was like a cracker that he wanted in there. <laughs> you know, like a, an animal cracker to be exact. <laughs> and then like Bobby gets him out by borrowing some, like he like, goes up to some old lady. Yeah. And he takes her hat and he goes, I can borrow this for you, hint. Okay. And pulls out the little, you know, the pin of like the the brooch that's in the hat and stabs him in the ass. And then the the sped up footage of of, uh, DeVito crawling out. Yeah, so he like stabs him in the ass with a pin. Yeah. And then somehow DeVito, yeah, like you said, in fast motion, like he's fucking Sonic the Hedgehog, gets out of this car like, like it's some sort of cartoon or something. Because one of many shots in this film that are sped up. This is, again, where I think that this whole film is a dream. Because the cartoon logic of this movie doesn't work in the real world. You know what? Maybe that's where those missing minutes are, is they sped up on the DVD version. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that could be it. <laughs> you see the you see Mr. Crown. And he's... Uh, this movie is too slow. Speed it up. Speed it up. It's going to yeah. look crazy. No, no. I say, we'll trim six minutes off this. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. The original cut is just no, no sped up footage. <laughs> it's Danny DeVito struggling for six minutes to crawl out of that, out of that fucking car. That's all it is. Here's a, Chris, maybe they just like sped the whole movie up to one and a half speed and yeah. then just ran it for the DVD. And they're like, yeah, yeah. there we go. He's trimmed off six minutes. We don't have to buy the expensive double side DVD. Now. Yeah. We can just buy the single layer. <laughs> <laughs> this is all. Cut it out. Cut it out. No, look, trust me, nobody's going to want to buy this movie. <laughs> like, not enough to, to justify that purchase yeah. of the double layer DVD. <laughs> 86 minutes, that's your cue. Then it's got to end. Yeah, it's a good cost expenditure. <laughs> 
Okay, so then we go to, so now they're working at the car wash, mm-hmm. right? And we find out, this is where we find out DeVito's a bookie. And I got real problems with this scene. Yeah. And so some guy just walks up to DeVito and he goes, LA by four. And I just write, okay, wait, hold up. So like, DeVito doesn't even set like betting lines or anything. He just allows people to go up and they go, yeah, LA by four. And that, <laughs> then he just hands him a hundred bucks. I'm like, so wait, what's the spread? What's the line? Like, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, there's. <laughs> I can walk up and like say a city and a number. It'll hand me money. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even know. Even have to know how to bet. Like I don't even do sports betting, but I know yeah. I can't go up to a counter in Vegas yeah. and be like, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd like the Yankees by three, please. <laughs> I'm not sure that's how it works. I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah. But all right, what a fucking disaster of a bookie this is. And yeah. No wonder he loses all this money. Our gambling addict <laughs> listeners, please let us know. Like, is is it the whole point of setting a betting line so that the house wins? That's the idea. So, like, <laughs> DeVito's got it backwards. And no wonder he's losing money because people can just come up and say whatever score they want. And he's like, all right, I'll just give you double your money if you win. <laughs> oh, so... Then Tina shows up, right? Yeah. And now Bobby, oh, God. So this is when he has another seizure, and he has this dream sequence of him on the sand of the Malibu beach. Yes. Opening the back door of his van and, like, tossing a red carpet <laughs> out into the sand. It, he rolls out the red carpet, and Tina runs up in a wedding dress to the van. And he, I also think he might be dressed in a suit. I, yeah, I didn't see the So suit. they're either going to the Academy Awards or, like, uh, they're getting married and fucking in that van. Like, the honeymoon is literally just going to Malibu Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think DeVito was the reverend? <laughs> um, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Money Maybe the whole Bobby. six minutes they cut out was a big uh, van wedding scene yeah. at the end. Yeah. Where all the vans from VanCon made a big circle around them, <laughs> and they made the vans kiss. <laughs> Oh. Are the all the vans wearing cummerbunds around the fenders? And like little <laughs> yeah, t- little yeah, the bow ties. Van, the van definitely has a bow tie on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, the, and the other van has a veil <laughs> over the windshield. I think like maybe that missing six minutes was that Vito Devito fell in love with the van because it became a character. Like maybe <laughs> maybe the van kind of nudged him in the ass and he was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> And then, you know, there's a scene of him butt naked in the exhaust pipe <laughs> of the van going to town. That's what the credits was. <laughs> and there's Devito starts... hunched, over a... <laughs> hunched over the exhaust pipe. And the gag is that it's on a hill and he forgot to put it in, put the brake on, so he's rolling backwards. Oh, no! <laughs> and so he's running backwards with his van with his dick in there. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> He's stuck. oh god so basically <laughs> tina shows up right and then yeah. adler is he says something to bobby about how he's never gonna be able to have sex with her or something i don't know what's going on but yeah. uh then bobby says something like yeah you guys wouldn't know because you're you, no wonder you're so good at washing cars you're just sitting around jacking off all the time but ba. got the jokes going yeah. uh and then i also noticed that there's a grind bin all-star in this scene is that isn't the mom Adler's friend, that blonde guy, yeah. is also his friend in Malibu Beach. That guy wearing the uh, jean jacket. Oh, yeah. And Chris, I'm pretty sure, but I couldn't confirm it. I think that's Tex from Jocks as well. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's him. So it has to be. Definitely a grind bin all-star. Yeah. And I write, it really must be a sequel. Mm-hmm. Maybe no, really Adler's is. character and that guy, like after this movie, yeah. they're supposed to be in Malibu Beach. No, because I think I still think this that for whatever reason they either didn't want or couldn't get Stuart Goetz, and because this, that character's also name is Bobby. <laughs> Goetz held out for more money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. I'm the reason this movie was successful. Yeah. <laughs> you see, this? Mr. Crown gives him a paper. It's got a hundred dollar bill taped to it. He goes, "Well, this is double what we gave you for the last movie. Yeah. I don't know how much more you want." <laughs> Because that character's name is Bobby also, and there's also the same two cop characters. They're almost identical to the characters. Yeah, the Laurel and Hardy cops. Yeah, they're both- Very similar. Very similar. Everybody was holding out for more money. (laughs) (laughs) 
Except for Bill Adler, he was like, where do you want me to show up? <laughs> yeah. He showed up barefoot. <laughs> so I shoot. get paid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they they really pushed hard to get Goetz and DeVito, but they uh, they fought hard. Yeah. You they know? just literally kind of kicked the dumpster and Adler popped out. So, <laughs> what, what time are we shooting, boss? <laughs> I think that Adler might be the only guy that has, like, a long-term... Like, he had a full-time job with Crown. Like, yeah. he was the resident Brando, right. as somebody has said in the past. Yeah. Is that uh, he was the only actor who had a like a multi-picture deal yeah <laughs> multi-picture <laughs> crown deal that sounds very frivolous they to liked me. them and signed them for 10 movies and they're like we'll figure it out <laughs> what does this contract look like uh, it's 50 dollars taped 10 times to 10 different pieces of paper <laughs> paper clip to 10 times <laughs> <laughs> it's stapled on, so it's, yeah. it's really difficult to get off. Yeah. You know how many times the intern had to draw the crown logo over and over again perfectly? <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, Chris. It's 50 half half dollar. <laughs> it's 50, 10 half $50 bills. Yeah. Because you get the other half when the movie's done. <laughs> And a little bit of tape, you know? Yeah, to so tape you can them together. stick it back together. Yeah. And he's he's like, trust me, kid. They take tape money at the bank. Trust me. <laughs> so they send Bob. Okay, so basically they pull a prank on Bobby, right? Mm-hmm. So they send his car through the wash yeah. uh, with the top down. And then Bobby gets all wet. And then the hijinks ensue because his, his jumpsuit gets pulled off. And he's now in his underwear in front of Tina. And he's he's all embarrassed. This is, this is like, you know... Pro, you know, plausible reason to sue for like workplace yeah, harassment. Here's another question: Like, okay, guys, so he, we never find out what happens to his convertible, right? Right. Does he trade that in to get the van? Good question. But you know, he still is like two hundred dollars short when he tries to get the van. Too. Yeah, but like, if if part of the trade in, like, don't you think they'd be like, no, now the car's ruined, you can't get the van? Oh, yeah. Maybe that's why that he was two hundred short. Yeah. It could have been a whole uh, another movie of him not being able to trade in that car and going on a homicidal rage. <laughs> <laughs> All upset that he couldn't get his van. Eight years. Eight years. So then, okay, basically, Tina gets pissed, as always, and drives off. Uh, and I just write, Bobby, she's not for you. Give it up. Obviously, you guys have nothing in common. Uh, and then, basically, he, he asks DeVito if he can get off work early. He does. We go to the van purchase, which is literally, now we are in literally the most useless scene in this whole movie, mm-hmm. is we have to watch Bobby buy a van from this man who, Chris, I'm pretty sure this is Tex from the Thrash It episode. Uh, this guy, this guy who sells the car to him is like dressed up like a fucking cowboy with a big old cowboy hat on. Yeah. And he's just sitting in his office, right? Yeah. And he walks in. Looks exactly like the description you've given of that man who almost raped you in a van. Yeah. In a parking lot. Yeah. Uh, So I was thinking, a little nice little grind bin all star, but maybe from Chris's real life. Yeah. I think you might be right. (laughs) Uh, But this whole scene makes no sense. We literally watch almost a five minute scene, which, by the way, six minutes of this movie had to be cut out. Mm. We watch Bobby pay for the van the whole time and sign a contract and all this shit. And then he doesn't even get the van. He has to leave and then go to another place to get the like van. Like a custom shop. I think. <laughs> so what's the fucking point? Well, it was a custom shop. I don't think they sell. Like... Did, they, did they get a deal from this dealership or something? He's like, look, my friend's got a dealership. He's going to give us a deal on the van. But yeah. uh, I know it makes no sense. We got to film a scene where we go to the dealership. But he told me you can't buy the van from there because for god's sakes he can't have that thing on his lot <laughs> <laughs> that it would buy like it makes no sense literally yeah. no sense i believe that scene. because then we go to bobby going to pick up the van mm-hmm. which is at a different location at some warehouse and the guy from the beginning of the movie where we saw just briefly saying and more 15 minutes ago makes his official appearance so the first time you see this movie you're probably confused as all hell like randall was <laughs> yeah and then you go, oh, this man's a character, not just like a figment of Bobby's imagination. Yeah, it's like, is it like an editing mistake at the beginning of the film? Randall, did you at any time think that maybe that that guy was just going to be like, you know, that little uh, alien that used to follow Fred Flintstone around? <laughs> <laughs> Did you think that like it was just going to be like this sort of guy, this this weird um, bum looking man just appears in Bobby's dreams every now and then and gives him a little one liner? <laughs> I, no, that would have made more sense. I almost thought that was the only time we were going to see this guy was in the beginning. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just like from another reel that Crown <laughs> made, like another movie. <laughs> oh shit, that got <laughs> that got somehow spliced in. Yeah, you know, there was this a long time ago. There was a study done, and it was actually a, a social uh, social psychological study, and that uh, it was planted that people were seeing the same person in their dreams all around the world at the same time. Was and it a man in a jumpsuit saying and more? That's what I'm hoping it was. <laughs> Yeah, so we finally meet him. He is a real person. He's not a figment of Bobby's imagination. Mm -hmm. He's not a little angel or devil that appears on his shoulder and goes like, rape that girl, Bobby. Mm -hmm. She wants it. Mm -hmm. She wants More. it. It's not, it's, it's not rape if you get a shirt off. No, it's DeVito dressed up as Cupid on his shoulder. <laughs> if DeVito showed up as a Cupid. Oh, God, I'd love it. Yeah. He picks up this van, right? And mm -hmm. also, this kind of pisses me off. So the guy's working on the van, that guy in the jumpsuit, the Ann Moore man. Yeah. But then he has some other guy who makes even less sense that's there. Yeah, okay, why is this guy there? <laughs> so there's some guy wearing sunglasses indoors yeah. and smoking a cigar inside the van, which is all white. Like, everything in this van is white. White shag carpeting, well, white walls. Well, blend in with the fluids that are going to be ex you know, <laughs> expelled after the deed you're, is done. You're right, Chris. This may be the one time you want a white interior to blend in with all the fluids. <laughs> Especially when it crusts over. It, it's extra hard to see. <laughs> Oh, imagine getting that out of shag. Oh, oh man. God. So this guy's smoking a cigar in the van, mm. which if I was Bobby would piss me off. I'd be like, get your fucking ashy cigar yeah. out of my van. Thank you. Well, in all fairness, Bobby does smoke a cigar in the van later. Yeah, that is true. So so he puts on, he's putting on the finishing touches, right? And then we get, uh-oh, a little, a little throw-in gag, mm -hmm. right? We know we, just to make sure that everybody knows that this is a comical movie. We have Bobby slip on a banana peel. Yeah. This is arguably the worst cut <laughs> of the banana peel gag I've ever seen. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> so, Randall, this is the first time you saw this movie. Did it confuse you when he slipped, or did you realize it was a banana peel? I, uh, it's such a weird segment because it's such an unnatural fall. <laughs> like, the camera kind of cuts up close. You don't see his feet. He just, like, leans straight back like he's on a plank or something. <laughs> And yeah, then he, he does. He <laughs> yeah, and then he gets up, and there's the banana peel still on his like toe. He's lifting his foot up. I was like, really? That's it's, okay. It's cut together so bad. Yeah. Like you don't even see the banana peel on the floor. You just the guy threw it like a minute ago, and then Bobby walks in, and you like you said, he falls like a plank of wood backwards, and they're like, oh, watch out for that banana peel. Yeah. Well, in all fairness, he probably didn't see it. Those giant bell bottoms. In front of him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they were just fucking dying on set oh, when yeah. this was like, oh, this is going to kill. This yeah. is going to kill. They're going to be rolling in the aisles. <laughs> Everybody's just laughing their asses off when they call cut. And they're like, they're going to love it. We're going to be remembered for this one, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy that says Bobby. Uh, okay. The, the and more man says that Bobby actually designed this van himself. And I write, of course he fucking did. Yeah. <laughs> and here's what's in the van, guys. I got a full list. Waterbed. Mm -hmm. Mirror on the ceiling, which seems like a real dangerous thing if it crashes. In mm -hmm. the event of a crash, yeah. shards of glass are flying everywhere. <laughs> when that van rolls. That's what this, this movie needed at the end. <laughs> it rolls over and Bobby just has a shard of glass through his neck. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I guess he's not okay after all. It's like it's going through his face, his eye. He's like, I'm okay. <laughs> he takes two steps and just collapses. <laughs> Got all sorts of glass in his lungs. <laughs> Mirror on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Foam rubber doors, which I write so they can't hear her screams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice soundproofing. <laughs> Speakers as big as a house. Yeah. Mag wheels. Four. Four of them. Yeah. I like that again. <laughs> I, I said this last year. He has to like really drive it in that there's four of them. Yeah, and they share a good belly laugh over yeah. this. Like not just a chuckle, like a like a <laughs> four. <laughs> a fridge, which is pretty amazing. Mm. A CB radio. A toaster. A toaster. Yeah. A captain's chair. As opposed to what? A captain's bench. <laughs> Captain's bench. A stool. A captain's stool. <laughs> captain's chair. They should have came with a captain's hat. If Bobby oh. rode this around with a little captain's hat, it would have made it so yeah. much more realistic. Captain fuck. <laughs> captain fuck. 
an eight track, a drink rack, a TV. Which okay. what type of fucking? There okay, were go ahead. there were multiple TVs. No, There's you're a... okay. It's a mirror. Yeah, I, I was confused by that okay. too. At okay, first. yeah, what you're seeing is a mirror. Okay, I was like, how many fucking TVs does he need? <laughs> Well, how do you get reception? I don't see an antenna. Uh, I yeah, there was an antenna. What? And on the back of the van? Well, yeah, there's a big ass <laughs> oh, long one. Probably wired into the CV antenna. Yeah, it's a big ass <laughs> antenna on the back of the van. So he's just like what getting Rams games on this thing back then. <laughs> like, why would you need a t- so fucking? You know, because stupid. back then this is when people lived in these vans for like days, if not weeks, at a time. Doesn't it feel like the car battery is just gonna run right out? Like this thing is just. Yeah, I mean it's got a fridge. It's got you better be running the the engine when you're yeah. doing anything in this thing. Yeah, or else you're stuck. Wait, hold on, I got a question. Okay, so it's got a fridge, right? right. But when you turn the van off, <laughs> would the fridge go off? <laughs> so like everything in there is gonna spoil, right? Well, I think the fridge is mostly for beers. Or do you just gotta let this van run twenty four seven? I don't think it's for food. <laughs> Spoiling food. I think it's just there for drinks. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Don't bring your leftovers, I guess, yeah. is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. A mirror, a mirrored hoods, which I, mirror hoods, mm-hmm. that's what he says. I, I guess that's just the plastic that goes over a side mirror. Yeah. Fog lights, a closet, I wrote, to hide the body, <laughs> <laughs> and more. <laughs> we never find out what more is. Yeah, what is the more? <laughs> yeah. So then Bobby drives off and celebrates. He's uh, He's just... Going around, putting his hand out the window. Yeah. Did you just... notice the curtains, though? Oh, okay, yes. You told me about the curtains, Chris. Yeah, because we didn't realize his last That's time. That's the end more, I guess. The curtains are like... <laughs> weird... The curtains are this weird black and white Greco-Roman illustrations of naked women and men. <laughs> so together. he's got, like, subliminal messaging. Like, yeah. You know, I, I don't know what it was like in 1977, but if I was a woman entering this van... I would either run or just be reserved to the fact that this might be the last, my last moments on earth. Yeah, because you're about to be entered <laughs> is the problem. <laughs> like, everything about it is horrifying. Yeah. So he's, he's celebrating. He, he smokes that joint on a cliff, right? And this is the first of many times where we'll encourage children and young, young people seeing yeah. this movie. Yeah, you know, every now and then it's all right to smoke a joint while you're driving. Hey, drink some wine while you're driving. You know, have fun. Let loose, kids. Well, Let it, loose. It, it explains a lot when he's, it's like, swerving maniacally in and out of these lanes when he's doing the celebratory <laughs> driving. Oh, yeah. His his fist is pumping out the window. <laughs> I wrote at the end of this movie that pretty much the moral of this movie is, fuck it. Yeah, that should have been the tagline. <laughs> Everything about this movie just leads to, eh, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. There's no consequences for anything. No, in the world no one. Of the van. Yeah, literally, you can roll a van and just walk walk away. Yeah, no Rape police a woman, report. Eh, who cares? Yeah, get in a car chase. Eh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, nothing. No consequences. Mm-mm. You know, DNA didn't exist. I guess no. so. Eh, Neither did know. AIDS. So you're getting <laughs> no DNA, feet. no AIDS. Just yeah. run wild, kids. Yeah. Run wild. Yeah. So we get the first drag race, right? Mm-hmm. Or lack of drag race is this green van rolls up. Uh, and Bobby, now you're right, Chris. Now he's smoking a cigar in the van, you know, getting his ash everywhere over that new, brand new van. <sighs> and they're like gonna drag race, but then the green van drives off, and then Bobby just does a little chuckle and turns right. And then here, yeah. And I write, why do we have this scene? Because he's, he's six just... minutes of this movie is lost, and we kept this. He's a sociopath. That's why. <laughs> do you think it was just more, more of Bobby turning right? That yeah. we missed like yeah. six more minutes of right turns. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so we go to the car wash, right? And yeah. he's showing off the straight air to the boys, Adler and the boys. Oh and uh, DeVito sees the van. This is the first time DeVito has seen it. He runs out and he looks inside and he goes, this is a palace. This is better than my, my apartment. apartment. <laughs> I want to know what DeVito's apartment looks like. I would give anything to yeah. know what his apartment. You know what it is? It's that car wash office. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, huh? <laughs> He's just got a cot in the corner. He's like, look, the bookie business is not going well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we fit a few red lines here and there, but, you know, uh, we're going to bounce back. We're going to be in the black again. <laughs> so we get the castor oil gag, right? Yeah. Which is just basically Bobby puts castor oil in open beers. And like I said uh, before when we were covering this movie, I would never drink an open beverage from this man. No. No, no. way. No. 
Uh, I wouldn't even drink a steel beverage from this man. <laughs> I know he has his ways. Yeah, I would wipe it off at least. Yeah. You know, maybe run it under some tap water just yeah. to be sure, or a black light for any chemicals. <laughs> <A black light. laughs> Who knows? So then he like goes over and throws away the key to the bathroom, mm. and he hands the beers, and the boys and uh, Devito just start down in these beers. And Devito at one point goes like, "Hey, Bobby, don't you want some beer? Road beers, you know, beer for the road." He's like, "No, no, no." I bought those off for you. So yeah, they drink it, and then I guess they all have to go to the bathroom, and DeVito plows through a bathroom door like yeah. a bowl. Yeah. Ha. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Ha. <laughs> so then we go to Bobby's house, and I write, this looks a lot like that Malibu Beach house, by the way. Mm-hmm. A lot like it. And I wrote, I guess the sister is not home, or she's just terrified to come out when Bobby's <laughs> around. Maybe she locks herself in her room. <laughs> she's afraid of her own brother. Yeah. <laughs> She, she doesn't know. She's caught him with a pair of binoculars. He said he was looking yeah. at birds, but uh-huh. she's like, I don't, I don't have any trees near my window. Bobby has found a way to get in through the drywall of the house <laughs> and into the bathroom and drilled like a little hole in the shower. Chris, he's painted himself as drywall once. Yeah, and just standing, stood on the <laughs> side of her room. <laughs> And the only reason she could tell is because of that orange poof sticking out. <laughs> Other than that, it was like he was never there. She opens her closet and he just hands her like <laughs> he's pretending to be a clothes hanger, and just hands her a shirt. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of times where the dad's like, Bobby, we gotta talk. <laughs> I imagine him like in a dress hanging from the clothes hanger. Just going that one step above. Interesting. I think maybe she moved away. Like that that one oh, summer as yeah. a lifeguard, she was like, I got to get out of this house. Yeah. I fear for my own life. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we show, okay, so Bobby's at home and his mom runs out to see the van. Yeah. And now this is a very odd scene. Yeah. So the mom comes out and she's, she's like, oh, oh, Bobby, wh- what is this? It's amazing. And she's like looking around and he's like, yeah, c- come in, mom, come in. And f- first of all, it scares me that Bobby would show his mom what he's just purchased, and she would somehow think this is normal. Yeah, at least he didn't call it his ballroom in front of uh, her. <laughs> God, but she like touches the waterbed. Did you notice she touches the waterbed? And she's almost scared of it. She's like, oh, oh, and he's like, no, no, it's a waterbed, mom. Get on, get on it, oh, touch it. But no. <laughs> That's why in the next scene, the dad drives up and the mom's just like kind of bouncing on the waterbed. She's like, eh. and the dad drives up and he goes, oh, my God, are you all right? He's what has he done to you? What has he done to you? I knew this day would come. God damn it, Bobby. First your sister, now your mother. What is this poon palace you brought our house? And there's that weird scene where the mom has a, like a flashback, so I guess it runs in the family. Okay, yeah. when I first saw this a year ago, I thought it was the dad having the flashback. No, it's definitely the mom. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or Bobby. Ooh. <laughs> that would have been great. He's like, you guys can use it on the weekend when I'm done with it. <laughs> uh, so the dad drives up, right? He, he does not like the van. Oh, hell no. He it's says, not. quote, it's, it's obscene, obscene, which I... A hundred percent agree mm. with. Mm. Yeah. This van is nothing but obscene. Do you think that was the description on the paper that gave George Burris? It just said obscene. <laughs> One word, obscene. All right. Uh, we got the directions for the van design. Very easy for you, George. Well, it could be easy. It could be hard. It says a lot of things. One word. One word for you. Obscene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, all right, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, okay, basically the dad says something about how Bobby is apparently buying this van and doing the whole van lifestyle instead of going to college, Yeah, which is a great choice, I guess. <laughs> I mean, what what is Bobby's plan? To bum around in this van and get, you know, get his rocks off, I guess. I guess so. He's yeah. like, well, you know, Dad, this is how it goes. I, I don't really plan on living past five years. <laughs> I figure I kind of buy this van, I fuck a, gr- I fuck a few girls, and then I just drive off a cliff one day. <laughs> <laughs> easy come, easy go. <laughs> While fucking them. You, uh, you, once it, once oh, it itches too hard, I just drive off a cliff. <laughs> 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 so the dad, of course, says he needs a drink <laughs> and wishes him well. <laughs> He's 
I'm almost positive, like, because we know that this is the same dad yeah. in Malibu Beach. Yeah. My theory is that this man either divorced, like, I don't think he divorced anybody. I think he, he maybe just ran out on this family, just completely, like, kind of like skip town style. Yeah. But just went a few neighborhoods over and found a new family. Uh, I think you're right. <laughs> he looks like he's about done. <laughs> At this point, though, he could just tell Bobby, like, to go live in the van then, mm-hmm. you know. You know, this would have been some conflict, Crown. You know, <laughs> maybe maybe play up the fact that the dad doesn't like that Bobby bought a van, you know. Yeah. Maybe we could have some stuff here, like maybe Bobby should have went to college instead of buying this van. Uh-huh. Maybe that's a plot point. Maybe the dad says, hey, Bobby, guess what? If you don't get a fucking job, you're out of the house. No, we're just going to have him drive around for 90 minutes and try to fuck women, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, DeVito doesn't have money. That makes much more sense it than does. developing the goddamn breadcrumbs of a, cl- a plot we have dropped right here in the first 30 minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, this, that college thing also has, like, the weirdest flashback uh, cutaway fantasy thing. Like, yeah, it if does. If you blink, you miss it. It's so fast. You can- yeah, and it... It sounds like like the Charlie Brown teacher uh-huh. going like, rubber, 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 and then Bobby's like smoking a cigarette while filling out papers with piles of books. Like, I'd be surprised if it's like a second long. It's so weird. Yeah, and they, you know what? What's even weirder, Randall, is that they set that scene up. Yeah. Like, they, they set up, they spent time filming this. It yeah. was at a location. Right. <laughs> like, they rent a school for a day just to get one shot. That's literally one second of sped up footage. And Mr. Crown's all pissed off. <laughs> well, I don't know why we waste the money on that scene, but whatever. You know, art is art. You keep you people keep telling me it's art. You know, this other guy fucking requested a shock suit. What the fuck are we gonna use that in, huh? You know what else? Some other guy told me we need suits. We need a ketchup, ketchup and a mustard, mustard suit. <laughs> when the fuck are we gonna use that? <laughs> you people getting fast and loose with this money. <laughs> That's how they went broke is these costumes. <laughs> when I tell you the budget's a hundred thousand, you don't have to spend all of it. Yeah. And <laughs> Maybe there was like a whole six minutes deleted of uh, an extended fl- a college scene. You yeah, know, you never know. That's six minutes, Chris. We'll never know. Uh, I think we will at one point. Well, I do have a surprise at the end of this. Okay. Uh, I because I saw like a big poof of hair outside the window. I'm hoping it's who I. Oh no, it. I have a very big surprise. Okay. Uh, about that six minutes. Okay. So the second, uh, drop that in there. You know, Ooh. Crown, take notes. I'll use that later. Yeah. Not like you, who drops in a plot and then just says, eh, fuck it. <laughs> it goes with the moral of the movie, you know. Yeah. Eh, fuck it. The dad's upset about the van. Eh, fuck it. We'll never see him again. For all we know, we w- he went inside and fucking shot himself. <laughs> I would have loved it if there was some scenes of the van, the dad just like trashing the van in the middle of the night, just like <laughs> you motherfucker, <laughs> you're ruining my life. <laughs> so then we get to the second drag race, mm-hmm. right? So now the green van shows up again. So the man in the green van, yeah, he's just a man that rides around in some sort of like I don't even know what you would call one of those hats. Oh, like a like a flap it's, hat, flap it's, jacket. Like it's not a newsy hat, but yeah. it's like a hat if like you were a 1920s pilot. Or something. I don't right. know. And this guy, he basically, he just serves to lose. The man in the green van is just a perennial loser. Mm-hmm. He just loses every race he ever takes part in. Is it his fault, though, every time? Because it seems like it is, because he just doesn't know how to control his van properly. Yeah, he was just not ready for that van lifestyle. No, no. You know? It's too fast. Yeah. Too fast for him, Chris. Yeah. He's not ready. He's not like Bobby, who's adopted the van lifestyle, because now he owns a van. All his shirts are van related, which, by the way, maybe the six minutes missing was Bobby going to buy all his whole new wardrobe, yeah. because for the rest of the movie, every shirt he wears has a van on it or says the word van on it. Van stuff. <laughs> Oh, because when did this movie come out? 1977, 1977? right? Because a lot of the shirts say like 1978 on them, which is interesting. What? Yeah, twice I've seen shirts like one of the ones that he wears in the pizza parlor. It's like it's like a Van Con shirt, and it says something something. Well, they're preparing for the next year. You yeah, know? yeah. You buy your ticket in advance, you get the T-shirt. Yeah. So <laughs> it's yeah. like the Super Bowl, you know? Right. You get your shirt in advance. You know? Yeah, that was kind of odd, but huh? Yeah. <laughs> So we get to the second drag race, right? And the it's that green van again. And Bobby races him this time. But then you get those Laurel and Hardy cops that we barely mentioned the first yeah. time we covered this movie. And they're yeah. just eating ice cream. And then the green van crashes into them. That's it. 
Go to the pizza place. Now, here's where I think the six minutes might be missing, guys. Okay. Because we cut from the green van crashing into that cop car, right? And then the next scene we see is just Dugan grabbing that guy by the collar, like, in the pizza place and being like, you're going to race me. That's right. Yeah, you're right. And I'm like, wait, what? Wouldn't that guy be in jail or something? Like, he just hit cops. Yeah. Is there a scene of him posting bail? I forgot. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> like, the cops are just like, eh, we know it's an accident. Boys will be boys. Just go off, son. We're cops. They'll take care of it for us at the station. It happens all the time. Just pay for my ice cream cone. <laughs> That's all he asks. Yeah, give me a new ice cream. And you know what? On second thought, don't. Fuck it. We go to this pizza place. Yeah, and Dugan's trying to force this green guy to race him for $100. And I write, didn't he just crash his van? Yeah. And then some guy hits on Sally, right? As she walks by, and then Dugan pours a beer down his pants, yeah, which is great. Uh, and then people are... F- okay, so we cut to the parking lot, and these people are fucking in a convertible, right? Yeah. With okay. the top down. The top down, the door is open. <laughs> the door is open. <laughs> Legs are sticking out, right? In front of this business. Yeah, okay. This is the thing. There's lights that come on from the back of the parking lot, and yeah. people like shine all their lights and start yeah. clapping. And I write, but they were literally fucking five feet from the front door of the pizza place. Yeah. Like, this is, like, a handicap spot. And they're, <laughs> yeah, they're it, like, it, what were you going to say, Randall? I was going to say, yeah, they're right up front. Right up front. Like, if you went, if you came out of the restaurant, the first thing you would see is a man pulling out. Like, <laughs> you would literally <laughs> see that. Like, there's there's legs flying up in the air, yeah. you know, giggling. You'd the car's to, rock. I mean, it's literally a splash zone. You have to, like, duck. <laughs> Just not to get anything in the face. <laughs> So these people like <laughs> splash. <so. laughs> yeah, some guy walks out with a fucking uh, tarp on or whatever that is. He's like, got a poncho like, on. Yeah, poncho like, like Sea World. <laughs> he's riding Splash Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> so I know because these people turn on the lights and they're all embarrassed. The guy's putting his pants on. I'm like, but you were literally fucking in the in the open. Yeah. Like, you could, what do you want? You know, it's <laughs> you were obviously putting on a show. Mm-hmm. So what's it even yeah. I guess if somebody's watching you, isn't that kind of what you wanted? So, OK, then Bobby pulls up and he blows the horn just to alert everyone to his presence. Mm-hmm. So if you're a woman, you might want to run. Yeah. If you hear that sound, if you hear the straight arrow horn, there's legends about this <laughs> through the 80s. They would say, if you hear this horn, it sounds a little bit like da 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 run. <laughs> yeah. Once you hear that sound, run. <laughs> if you're a woman, run. <laughs> As we said in the uh, Jocks episode, every time that Van Horn rings, or no, I'm sorry, every time a heel clicks, oh yeah, heels click, <laughs> and a bra strap gets t- uh, undone, that sound will appear. Yeah. <laughs> and the van will soon follow. <laughs> So the warning has been called. Bobby is here. He is now fully assimilated to van culture. Mm-hmm. He is wearing van shirts, tucking his shirts in now. Without a belt. High-waisted jeans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very awkward without that belt, you know? Yeah. And, you know, all all 80 pounds of this man. <laughs> like, he's literally, like, a, basically a popsicle stick of a man. Yeah. Uh, An orange, like, a literal <laughs> creamsicle of a man. <laughs> it's a creamsicle of a man <laughs> with a little orange poop. <laughs> So he goes up to the bar and he orders a beer because, uh, of course, any 18-year-old could just order a beer yeah. in Crown's World, mm-hmm. Crown's LA, which, by the way, we found out, our good friend who left us a message there, Chris Hughes, found out the drinking age in Los Angeles uh, since 1938 has been 21. It has yeah. never been 18, yeah. so there is no point in the history of Los Angeles that a high school student could go into a bar and order a beer. And also right next to the police station. Yeah, so a real dude. interesting one. But he looks at that lady and he goes, hey, beautiful. You into studs? Oh, thank God. And she just kind of, oh, what did she say? Something like, uh, yeah, I'm into studs, but not assholes or something? Yeah, something along those lines. Yeah. And then he just looks at another girl and he goes, hey, I'm Bobby. <laughs> and she just laughs hysterically yeah. at him. Yeah. Then Sally comes up and for some reason Sally doesn't, isn't repulsed by Bobby. No, that's the weird thing about this one is that she's the one girl that's like, oh, hey. Like, gives Either him the time of day. Sally's not real. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Like, I don't... Like, she might be a figment of his imagination. This that whole might thing be might be a figment. That might be true. You know how Mulholland Drive... Have you seen the... Have you guys seen the movie Mulholland Drive? Yeah. 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 You know how that, like, basically that movie is, like, just uh, Naomi Watts' character's masturbatory fantasy... Yeah, like of like the reality and then her fantasy world. Like, what if the van is just Bobby's masturbatory fantasy one night? Like this Ooh. whole thing is just like the night before he he goes to bed for high school graduation. That's the six minutes. At the end of this movie, oh, you just wow. cut to Bobby just laying in that. bed. We see a shot, an overhead shot, and he just goes, ah, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hit the ceiling at night, is what it says when it turns black. It just cuts to black. I think this might be it. Like, because none of this makes any fucking sense. Yeah. Also, it would be really weird if uh, Bobby's masturbatory fantasy involves all of this, like, cuckolding that's in this. <laughs> it's very odd. It's, only, it's, it's human psychology, you know? It's his insecurity is coming. <laughs> he's he's interested. He's turned on by the challenge. You know? Yeah. He, <laughs> the pursuit. It's the thrill of the hunt. <laughs> so Bobby, uh, he sees Sally, right? And yeah. he's like, hey, can I buy you a drink? And she's like, no, I'm here with Dugan. He's like, well, can I buy you a drink sometime? She's like, yeah, I guess. And then Dugan comes out, and uh, Bobby, he just runs off, right? Mm-hmm. But then it's okay, guys, because he meets uh, the pinball machine girl. Yeah, thank God for her. Okay, amazing. Now, Randall, this has got to be one of your favorite conversations in this movie, I'm assuming, right? The first time watching it? Oh, um. This is when he goes up to the girl. He goes, hey, you into Vance? Oh, yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and she's all, yeah. Depends it, on who's driving it. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, you see that one outside? And she goes, yeah, I saw it pull up. And I almost imagine her going like, how could you miss it? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It looked like a big police tape <laughs> rolling up. And he goes, yeah, you want to go outside and share a joint in the back? She says, yes. And Bobby, dynamite. <laughs> So he takes the girl into the back, and this is when we first learn that Bobby is apparently the main character of this movie, and I guess we're supposed to root for him? It takes a, the movie takes a serious turn right here. <laughs> yeah. This like is a beca- major por- part of this movie. <laughs> so, Randall, they go in the back of this van, <laughs> and they're sharing a joint. And explain to me, because this is the first time you've seen it now, what 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 do you witness as they're sharing this joint? Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> what kind of comes to mind is a rape scene if done on the Benny Hill show. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear that music coming right up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't, like, that's the, yeah, it's her. He doesn't waste any time, and it does the whole sped up thing, <laughs> and she's not having any of it. Like, it's, no. It, it's like they sped it up for comedy, but it's it's a rape it's scene. It's not funny. Like, it's she's not consenting. disturbing. <laughs> Do you think they sped it up because people, <laughs> people I, yeah. were uncomfortable? <laughs> I bet they did. <laughs> Mr. Crowd himself and go, oh my god. <laughs> now look, I understand what you're going for. Trust me, I've been there, okay? Yeah. But this is a rape. <laughs> we can't show this. We can't show this in theaters. Yeah. But I got an idea. <laughs> Speed it up. <laughs> we'll put a little com- comedic twist on it, eh? You know? if uh, Look, we've done focus groups on this. If a rape happens in fast motion, people think it's funny. <laughs> The trick is you just got to hurry up and get to the bra padding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As soon as you get to that bra, I was laughing my fucking ass off with that bra gag. Get to that fast. <laughs> but we got to show the whole rape where it makes no sense. <laughs> because basically they both, I think she doesn't even take one hit of the joint. Oh. Before Bobby just literally lunges at the breasts. Like, like I said, he's a Terminator. <laughs> His eyes focus in on the breastal yeah. region. The breastal <laughs> region. <laughs> and he just hand just goes like da 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 and it goes right from the boobs. Imagine if Bobby was like this. What is that? Uh 
what is it? The T two thousand. Oh, the T one thousand. The T one thousand. The one that becomes liquid metal. Yeah. Fucking hey, if Bobby was one of those, we'd be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> He's a chameleon of a man. Just... He just turns into a tampon. Holy fuck, that's what we thought about Malibu Beach. That he became another man's skin. That's right. right. Maybe he's skin. just a fucking. <laughs> where, do you, where do you think James Cameron got his idea? There, there you go. <laughs> Liquid so, poly alloy. <laughs> so yeah, he reaches right for the goods yeah. and she yells, hands off the tits. And Bobby responds with, come on, you know you love it. <laughs> Man, my Which favorite line. Is, I hear being read in a deposition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the girl's on the stand. And then what did he say next? He said, he said, come on, I know you love it. <laughs> <laughs> and Bobby's just, he's bobbing his head on the window. Like, <laughs> like a green, like, yeah. yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, that, I did, I did. <laughs> the court stenographer is like just disgusted <laughs> with every word. <laughs> no, Bob, Bobby's lawyer is DeVito. Yeah. And he just goes up to the front and he goes, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I would like to say two, three words. Here's a visual aid for you. And he just pulls out a big poster board and it just has written on it. It says van equals consent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then he has a big picture of the straight arrow, and he goes, if you went inside there, you would pretty much know what's what's (laughs) about to happen. (laughs) (laughs) It's basically like saying yes. (laughs) (laughs) Then she says, quit pawing me, and he says, quote, I'm not pawing you, I'm loving you. (laughs) Again, to the judge. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Do you think the judge has his hands below, like loading a gun? <laughs> just ready to be the executioner right then and there. Yeah, it's just can we fast? Look, I know the death penalty works slow in California. Can we fast track this one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do we still have firing ranges? Yeah, it's like his hands, like furiously loading the pistol, like, <laughs> round by round. It was the last hanging by Dick that they ever did in yeah. California. <laughs> <laughs> so then bobby you know he gets sick of this right yeah. so he goes he just he's fucking done with words and he just leaps on top of her and starts ripping her clothes off mm-hmm. and he says quote i like your hair yeah over and over while laughing <laughs> i didn't even notice that that's actually pretty bothersome. oh yeah oh oh yeah he says oh <laughs> i like your hair <laughs> come on i like your hair <laughs> Randall, I'm sure if, I, if maybe you fast forwarded this scene, you were like, oh no, what did they make me watch? <laughs> no, I, I think I was just surprised by it because because oh, I knew, okay, because I remember you guys talking about in that in the first episode, I remember you guys talking about the, the girl that goes out with him to smoke a joint in the van and all that. <laughs> and then once it actually gets to it, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I can't stress this enough. Yeah. If you're not going to watch this movie, watch this scene because it is insane. Oh, it's, it's deplorable by all accounts. This, this is what they should show in courtrooms of being like, this is, they should show this in high school classrooms and go, yeah. this is rape, everybody. Mm. <laughs> watch and learn. Don't do this. Yeah. This is the example of not what not. <laughs> Maybe this was all meant to be like a PSA, like a big long oh, public yeah, service huh. announcement of like, boys, this is not okay. Yeah, they lost funding. <laughs> they had to cut six minutes out. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Krause, he spot the footage and he's like, well, I think we can make a movie out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of playing up the uh, the morality angle of it, maybe we cut this six minutes out and say, hey, fuck it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> <laughs> then this girl runs off, but not before like Bobby reaches into her bra oh, in the hilarious, like you said, Randall, Betty Hill gag, yeah. where he pulls out, like I guess she stuffed her bra with pads. Yeah, that's it. And then Bobby, like, laughs, and, like, now she's embarrassed. But this is all played off as, like, oh, she was just embarrassed. And it's like, no. <laughs> I think she, she was went... assaulted. <laughs> she goes into the, she goes back into the pizza parlor, and she's like, can somebody please call the police? That man in that van raped me. And the guy goes, well, wait, did you go inside of that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he goes, well, there's nothing I can, my hands are tied. It's tied. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, she ran across the street to the police station, and that's what they said. Oh, no, no, no. We're not <laughs> yeah. touching that one. We're they not touching her, that one. They give her a business card to Planned Parenthood. It's sent <laughs> honey, her on her way. Honey, you learned your lesson. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Oh, no, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So then Bobby takes a new woman in the van, oh. right? And she takes her top off, and uh-oh, she's a hooker. Mm-hmm. And Bobby, uh, you know, he just he just puts his hand over his head, and he goes, oh, boy. And then we cut to just him, like, paying, what, the pimp? Like, no, not yet. Oh. There's another woman, That's so a right. third woman now. I How long do you think the timeline is for this, guys? Like maybe All night. Th- all night or within yeah. five minutes? It seemed like five, it was bam, bam, bam. Yeah, he just like, you imagine Bobby walking into that pizza place and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a dog. <laughs> he just walks in. He's like. <laughs> Sniffing crotches left and right. <laughs> or my theory of him being a Terminator is just his eyes, are, his thing is going wild. Like yeah, just finding the first, first set of breasts within view. Keeps flickering. <laughs> And so this is the third woman, and Bobby's, Bobby's like, just rumbling around under the covers. And then, yeah, Chris, so a man opens the door. And it's apparently the pimp. And he's carrying a nightstick. Yeah, which I thought was hilarious. And we just cut to <laughs> Bobby paying him off $10. Yeah, I'm we thinking, actually see the $10. Yeah, it's like, great. what did he get for $10? <laughs> Chris, I think he got F easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What did what did he get, Chris, for ten dollars? What did she have to go through for ten dollars? <laughs> <It's more like laughs> <it. laughs> the pip was like, "You put her in here? Yeah. Oh my god! He's How like, dare you?" <laughs> <laughs> that fact, the pip took her after that and shot her. <laughs> the pip was like, "I'm ashamed of you, son. I'm yeah. ashamed of you." <laughs> I think he killed that girl after that later that night. And she was unclean. Yeah, she he put two rounds in the back of the head and. Uh, Say, well, she's off the market now. <laughs> He's ruined her. Yeah, we can't have this bee stock roaming around. Her. <laughs> she was in that van. <laughs> I can't market this anymore. No. So then he gets back at the bar. So Bobby's now in the bar drinking after a long night of failure. Yeah. And he just says, <laughs> women. Because it's all their fault, yeah. guys. It's oh, yeah. all their fault. <laughs> <laughs> this is so bad. A woman wrote this movie. I know. I think she wrote it and it got crossed out at the crown offices She's with the like, black high, with the black pen. Can you please cut out that part where he says "women" and the, the producer's like, "Nope, favorite part." <laughs> 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 you broads don't know comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and so then his friend Jack shows up, right? And yeah. they go outside to check out his van. But then, like for no reason, Adler all of a sudden appears and they like yeah, chase they just after ambush them, them. And then they drive off. Well, that's just payback for the for the beer, right? Yeah, but it comes so quickly, you yeah. can barely tell what's going on. But, yeah, because you don't even really see this, their faces. You know, like they walk outside, and then literally yeah. Adler just attacks Bobby. Like there was yeah. no setup. Yeah. Either the you know the PA that night overexposed the film, or they mm. just fucking forgot the shot list, and they're like, oh, we, shot list, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hey, we got two days to film at this pizza place. Get whatever yeah. footage you can it's and gonna, run. It's gonna take two days just to write a shot list. <laughs> what if the manager came out and like, what are you doing in here? You can't <laughs> film a movie. Oh, run, run. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> do you think how they got the manager out of the the parlor is to get him on the phone, order a big catering order <laughs> in the back? <laughs> Mr. Krause just constantly ordering large pizza deliveries. All right, re- sneak in there with the camera. Shoot a scene. Shoot a scene. Go, go, go. <laughs> All right, pepperoni. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> can you name off those toppings again? <laughs> He's the getting size. the intern over at Crown. <laughs> Uh, so they're driving around in their van and then they see tina and sue and basically they almost kill these poor girls because (laughs) yeah they're like like fucking christine in their ass (laughs) tina tries to drive away and sue's like why are you speeding up she's like i want to get away obviously i'm smart enough to know that that is a giant caution tape rolling down the highway like literally death is inside i can see the fucking reaper peering out that bubble window we gotta move yeah <laughs> and she's like but i like him and then so they're they're driving off and bobby's friend is like come on catch up to him get him get him <laughs> and they're like almost kissing the bumper when they get behind him. yeah they they pull up real close yeah. like you think this movie might end right right uh, this yeah. might become a much different movie yeah. within a minute. How do we know these two girls aren't packing? 
<laughs> I know. Because at first, like, okay, so Sue looks around and she says, that's them in the van. Yeah. That's Bobby and Jack mm-hmm. in a van. Yeah. But otherwise, like, if they couldn't see the lights, they would just think, like, oh, my God, death has come. <laughs> like, this. <laughs> and so there's no way. There's no way it was intentional, but it's such a like an ominous, striking image because their car is tiny. That van in in like engulfs the whole car in the frame, and it's behind the car. Like it's, I was feeling anxious. I was like, "They're yeah, they're gonna they're gonna run over this car." This is going. the part when the van could have had a mouth come out. You know what I mean? That tongue <laughs> in the mouth <laughs> just literally ate this other car. No, it latches onto their onto the back bumper and slowly sucks them towards it. <laughs> It does. It sucks it in the cars. Whoop. <laughs> like, a, like a slow tow in the, in the front of the van. <laughs> so they don't get away, which I feel horrible for them. And like, basically, they pull the side of the road, and Tito's like, can't wait to get away. And Sue's like, eh, I want to fuck this guy. And then Jack, he's like talking to Bobby. He's like, Bobby, come on, take one for the team. Can you hang out with Tina uh, so I can go have sex with this other girl? And Bobby's like, Tina's no fun. I wrote, she really isn't. Uh, but she has a reason and she doesn't want to talk to him. And I write, she doesn't at all Mm -hmm. because we cut to Sue and she's like, come on, Tina, can't you go talk to Bobby? And she's like, no, literally no. Mm -hmm. Do you see what that man is driving? (laughs) You know, this guy at school, he, (laughs) he was known as that guy that jacked off in class (laughs) in front of the class. (laughs) I mean, Many women have reported seeing an orange poof sneak in and out of the girl's bathroom, and we never found out who it was, but we know who it was. <laughs> There's only one poof like that one at school. Very like, feathered. Do you see just under a stall? You just hear this, <laughs> and then like the girls reported this in school. Yeah. This was this was reported to the principal right. many times. Is a girl would be sitting in the stall trying to use the restroom, and a little. <laughs> and a little poof would appear Mm -hmm. above the the restroom door yeah and they would just cower in fear (laughs) and then it would just disappear yeah and they'd walk out of the bathroom and it would just be like the wind blew through yeah you wouldn't even hear footsteps (laughs) it was like a breeze (laughs) but they knew who it was oh yeah they all knew who it was. And now Tina, the valedictorian of the school, uh. is supposed to have uh, conversations with him. Bobby then again flashes back. He has that brain tumor seizure of the red carpet dream again. Uh, do you think that's what he told her when he was strangling her to death? <laughs> <laughs> Is he's like, it's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. <laughs> We're going to get married. <laughs> I think he was strangling her and himself at the same time for some kind of auto, oh, yeah, auto erotic, kind of strangle. Auto erotic asphyxiation going on. <laughs> Just, you want to get the... <laughs> Uh, then Tina gets in the van, yeah. and she loves it, yeah. right, guys? Because she says, it's like a whorehouse on wheels. I love that line. <laughs> that should have been the poster tagline. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> the van, whorehouse on wheels. <laughs> That's what we wanted to call it, kid, but the, the Thetas, they weren't interested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, like, because they make the posters before the movies, obviously. Right. Uh, Mr. Crowd says that. He's, oh, fuck, that should have been the goddamn <laughs> <laughs> Can we change the posters? Well, maybe on that Mexican poster with the van that has is trying to lick the woman. <laughs> okay, so Tina loves the van. She says a whorehouse on wheels. And then Bobby responds with, well, the other girls like it just fine. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. And she goes... I bet they do. <laughs> She's the only person in this film that has the sense to say things how they are. Yeah, like I when I watch this film for like the eighth time now, I have so much sympathy for yeah. Tina's character. Like I feel for her. Yeah. I almost think she might be the main character. Like Yeah. <laughs> like, She's like the straight man in this she film. She almost might be the protagonist. Yeah. We're rooting for her to get away. Yeah. And obviously she fails at the end. <laughs> Whether a case of Stockholm Syndrome yeah. or she's just given in. Mm-hmm. Like, because that's the way Bobby works. Try, try, try again until she gives in. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. The van. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. But then it gets worse because then we go to the beach and now Bobby and Tina are sitting by a nice raging fire, guys. Oh, God. Yeah. The best line ever is coming up. This is the best line. (laughs) This is my one note I took during this movie. (laughs) The one. (laughs) 
<laughs> so Randall, <laughs> Tina can't go home with Sue because she's staying at Sue's house or something, right? So yeah. she can't go home without her. And then Bobby says, well, you could stay with me in the van. And she says, can I trust you? And Bobby responds with, can you trust me? Shit. I know how you women get at night. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you women get at night was written on a piece of paper <laughs> <laughs> and shot by a film crew. And everybody was like, yeah, that seems right. Yeah. <laughs> Take two, please. <laughs> yeah. All right, moving on to the next scene. <laughs> so he says, shit. Yeah. I know how you women get at night. And then uh, goes for rape number three yeah. on Tina. My wife was in the room during this part. And I said, hold on, hold on. You got to watch this part, right? Yeah. And she just stared at me after I played this scene to her, just like, what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <sighs> and this is when I wrote for the first time in my notes, this is truly a relationship built out of simple convenience. Oh, God, you think so? Because they are literally stuck with each other. And Bobby's like, well, if we're going to be stuck with each other, we might as well be stuck, stuck in, in each, each other. other. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go inside the van and we see what I would say is the future of Tina and Bobby's relationship. Tina chain smoking. <laughs> like she has an ashtray full of cigarettes. And Bobby just binge drinking beer after beer. And I'm like, this is them in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> Except they're like maybe 20 pounds heavier. <laughs> and all of that pounds, uh, that's uh, cancer. It's, it's tumors. And Tina has been thinking for years, how did I get into this? Yeah. How did I get into this? <laughs> but they go to sleep and I guess nothing happens. I don't think anything happens. Tina's not going to well, like that. Well, not that she knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not that she or the audience thankfully knows about. Yeah. So then we cut to the morning and Bobby's running shirtless on the beach. Mm. Uh, and then Tina wakes up. So did you notice this? Like, so he's running shirtless on the beach and he runs towards the van. And then we see a shot of Tina walking up and she's almost like, oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> like, she looks frightened, like, oh, my God, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> what is this bubble window? <laughs> Uh, so she wakes up. It's too late to leave. Holy fuck. She's stuck with them more. Oh, my God. But then Toast pops up and Bobby pours some coffee. She excuses herself. Uh, and then for some reason, Bobby knows she's going to the bathroom. Like, almost as if he can smell it like a bear. He knows that she somehow has to use the restroom and throws her a roll of toilet paper. And then she walks off and he goes, women. And I wrote, for what? She's but using why? the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> God, they get a pee too. Yeah, they always got a pee. Yeah. <laughs> I can't take her anywhere. Like, why did that justify a women comment? I, I asked Mr. Crown. He was the one who probably put hey, it in there. Can we do another cut? When that broad goes off to use the bathroom, let me tell you something. My wife has always got to use the goddamn bathroom everywhere we go. Honey, I got to pee. I got to pee. Stop the uh. car. There's nothing funnier to a man. So when he throws her that toilet paper, just have him go, women. Yeah. Trust me. Trust me, son. They'll be laughing. No, Mr. Crown, it's his ex-wife. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. My ex-wife. My ex-wife had a piss all the time. <laughs> so Sue and Jack, uh, the two friends, right? They drive back to the beach. Yeah. Uh, and then Bobby... Okay. So this is where we get the... Um, the in the lore of the grind bin, the, the tale of the traveling eight track. Mm -hmm. uh, as you called it, Chris, the sisterhood of the traveling eight track. Right. So Bobby, for some reason, when he bought this van, it came with... Either he bought this van and it came with this tape or... The idea of buying this at a record store is even more frightening now that I think about it. Yeah, what like category is in under when they when they file it at the record store, you know? <laughs> Erotic. Erotic. <laughs> like Randall, do you think that this came with the van or this was purchased later? It seems like it comes it came with the van. I think he requested it. Remember, everything is like his design. <laughs> but, but it really is. But I it's think in the design he, notes. I also want an orgasmic A-track tape <laughs> yep. of people having sex. Yeah. And the van guy's like, well, that's a tall order. I don't know how I'm going to get this one. <laughs> so he just sneaks a microphone into Sally's house one night or something. Oh, no, we know where this was made. This was from <laughs> Super Chick. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. You're right. It was from Super Chick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was that one guy's album. Yeah. 
So apparently, if nobody knows what we're talking about, Bobby has an eight-track tape, which is basically a woman having an orgasm. Yeah. So he sees Sue and Jack pull up, and he puts on the orgasm tape, and then starts rocking the van bath back and forth. So they think that Bobby and Tina are having sex inside the van, and then they just drive off. And I write, the truth would come out very soon, yeah. and he will look insane. Mm-hmm. Like. The- <laughs> If they didn't think he was a weirdo before, can you imagine this conversation? Oh, well, there is a conversation. <laughs> there will be. I honestly think it doesn't get brought up enough. Like, No. <laughs> I, think that this, I think that people and their, oh, fuck it, attitude, it, it, they should really dig into this one a little bit yeah. more. <laughs> First of all, why do you have that 8-track? Second of all, how did you? <laughs> how is this gag ever going to work? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like, what would have been even better is if Tina walked up to the van while he was doing this gag. <laughs> and the door came loose and popped open, and there he is rocking it. And she just stares at him and is like, can you please take me home? <laughs> <laughs> he's got this raging boner, like we rock in the van. So luckily, uh, Tina gets dropped off, finally, at home. Oh, luckily, alive. Luck- dropped off at home. I'll say that. I'll preface and, it at home. And also include the words alive. <laughs> Well, she doesn't get dropped off at home because Bobby's like, hey, where do you live? And she's like, no, 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 please drop me off on this corner. And he's yeah. like, no, 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 I'll pull, I'll pull up right to your house. She's oh, like, no. no, Bobby, please, right here. Right here is fine. <laughs> <laughs> she says it's because she doesn't want her parents seeing the van, but I also think it might be because she doesn't yeah. want him knowing where she lives. That's a very sly way of making sure Bobby doesn't know where you live. <laughs> I would like it if he was like, Tina, I already know where you live. <laughs> the van knows Tina. I know where every girl lives yeah. In fact, people say that my back is kind of like a map A map of You've seen those map of the stars? It's like a map of every girl's house Sitting right on my back So Bobby drops her off, right? Yeah. And um, he asks if he can see her again And I write, it didn't go well, man I wouldn't no. ask for a second date No. And she says, don't hold your breath It should end there <laughs> It should end there <laughs> Then Bobby drives around to music for a while, and uh, for some reason, we zoom in for about three minutes on two of the mag wheels. Yeah. Just Just in case you forgot or didn't believe that they were there, you got to show the other side of the van just in case they didn't think there was four (sighs) mag wheels and maybe only two. We got to get that other dome window, make sure we know it's there, the curtains. I know, like, we just get glamour shots of the wheels of the van. Yeah. And then we cut to Sally washing her car in a wet t-shirt and bobby just like slams on the brakes and then he just goes into his terminator trance mm. you know he focuses on in on the goods and then they have a moment but then dugan pulls up and he, bobby's got to go yeah so he drives off and then dugan like makes out with her and then this orange poof appears Pops behind in the corner <laughs> Right on schedule, right on cue. <laughs> it just pops up from a corner, and he's like, eh? <laughs> uh, and then he realizes Dugan has muscles, so now he needs to, like... <laughs> yeah, one throwaway <laughs> shot, yeah. <laughs> it's basically, like, if you've ever seen Over the Top with Stallone... Oh, God, Where yeah. he has a whole uh, arm rig in his big rig where he, like, lifts weights. Mm. Bobby just has, like, a 10-pound weight that he's now going to use... Beef up one arm, I guess. Yeah, just just the one. <laughs> While he's driving the van around. Do you think he sticks the other one out the window? And then he curls slipping? it? Yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, God. Then we get to the burger stand. Yes. So then we get... <laughs> Chris actually said yes. Like, <laughs> it's hilarious. Like, this is a good scene. Which is the quote, big girl. Yeah. Uh, which is basically, he goes up to this girl and he's like, hey, you want to share a joint in the back? He's using his line. Because this girl to me is like, she actually worked there. And this is their crown's way of getting free <laughs> free acting. Because <laughs> the way she delivers it is just terrible. Oh, yeah, she she just is like, oh, yeah, no, I don't have time for a joint, but I have time for a quickie. Yeah. And they go out into the van. I just love waterbeds. <laughs> And apparently, like, I guess Crown is saying, like, that she's huge or something. Yeah. She just looks like a normal lady. Normal person, yeah. (laughs) And apparently uh, she, well, I do like this part, is that finally the tables are turned. And now Bobby is raped (laughs) by a woman in his own van. And she she rapes him so hard that she pops the waterbed. And you just see this shot of all this water coming out. (laughs) 
And I, I was okay, and he's cleaning it afterwards. And did I see like a shop vac in there? Okay, no, no, no. It's even worse. Bobby is cleaning the van while his friend refills <clears throat> that water bed, but yeah. Bobby just has a blow dryer. Yeah. And I write a blow dryer and water. <clears throat> Real right. good mix, Bobby. Right. Okay. <laughs> a little shocker, huh? Yeah. So they drive off. Okay, so the, the van's clean, and drive off, and Jack asks about Tina, and Bobby's like, oh, she was wonderful, she yeah. was wonderful. And then all of a sudden, we cut to Sue and Tina, and they're, like, at Sue's house, and she's she's telling Tina, well, Tina's like, I don't know, Sue, I'm, I'm so uptight. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, the dialogue written by the lady, yeah. I'm assuming. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just a prude. I don't know. Have this broad talk about how she's so uptight all the time. You know? <laughs> and then tell the other one, tell her to loosen up. It's a good lesson. <laughs> <laughs> because basically she says like, no, I don't know, Sue. I'm a real prude. And she's like, well, Tina, maybe if you unbutton a few buttons every now and then, maybe if you slept around a little bit, uh, boys would like you. Yeah. And she goes, you know, that's good advice, Sue. <laughs> <sighs> So then, basically, Jack puts in that eight-track tape, oh. and they hear the sex tape, and he knows now. He's like, "Oh well, you were making all that up," and they just kind of laugh it off. And Bobby's like, "Yeah, fuck it, yeah, fuck it." Yeah, basically, <laughs> no consequence. Um, this will never get brought up again. No, unfortunately. Uh, so then Jack plays. Okay, Jack plays with the CB radio in the car oh, and yeah. then plays that eight track over the CB yeah. radio. And this is really creepy is that the guy on the other end of the CB radio is like, Hey, I'll be right over. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. If they were f- smart, they would have given them like Dugan's address. Oh, that would have been great. Yeah. Or yeah. Sally. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. So they pick up the girls and this is when the van becomes a character guys, mm-hmm. because Tina looks out the window and she goes, it's Bobby and Jack and in that, that van. van. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh so, so hard. The van is now a full character. Yeah, <laughs> the van is a dialogue. <laughs> yeah, it speaks in Morse, Chris. It does. So then they all drive off, and I love this part. Tina's mom watches through the window with horrified eyes, as if <laughs> for some reason Bobby honks the horn while he's driving away. As I, as if to signal this will be the last sound that Tina will ever hear. <laughs> And the mom's filing the police report, and she goes, I saw this caution tape of a van drive away, and I heard the sound. Oh, oh, no, don't play that sound. (laughs) (laughs) It's like some siren sound of, like, rape. So then we go to driving. uh, They're driving around the cliffs of Malibu, sharing a nice jug of wine Mm -hmm. while they're driving. Bobby's just swerving all over, drinking his wine, sitting in the captain's chair. And they're telling Tina, they're like, lighten up, Tina, drink some alcohol while we're driving. Come on, be a kid. (laughs) Are we on our way to VanCon now? VanCon, 1977. We go to the van gathering at the beach. They park, and Sue and Jack are already fucking in the back of the van, so Bobby and Tina go share a moment where basically we get Chevy Van to play over this as we go look at various vans parked around the beach. We have van names are the Ninth Wonder of the World, the Stowaway, Insanity, Insanity, King McCool of Compton Cow, Half Breed, which I thought was yeah, a very interesting one, yeah. Yeah. and the Clark Street Speakeasy. The, all these vans are about as garish. No, nothing's as garish as the Straight Arrow, no. but they are close. I mean, there's lots of like crushed velvet in one van. Like the whole interior is like uh, like a bad uh, velvet suit. It is. Like, like a Willy Wonka house. Yeah. And Bobby keeps making Tina run her hand over it. And she's, like, disgusted by it. He's like, come on, feel it, feel it. She's like, Bobby, there's stains all over the place. <laughs> uh, some people open the straight arrow and catch Sue and Jack uh, having sex in the back. Didn't, because they didn't mean for the straight arrow to be on display. It was just part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, apparently at VanCon, you, you park just, your van at the beach, yeah, uh, and you can just go into vans and check them out, and yeah. it's just like a museum for vans. It's like an open house. Yeah, it's an open house. <laughs> uh, so then Tina almost gets run over by a van. Yeah. And Bobby yells like, "What's the matter with you?" And I'm like, "Well, she was standing in the road." Yeah. <laughs> was that during the race? No, because then they're standing in the street, and then. Tina doesn't know what a drag race is, yeah. and Bobby explains it to her. And the green van races Dugan, and then the green van crashes again into, like, the beach. Yeah, how did he lose control so easily? Was it just Dugan? I don't know. 
Yeah. But then Bobby, Tina was like, I thought you said it was safe. And Bobby goes, it's supposed to be. Like in this weird, <laughs> ominous voice. Yeah. Like, like what? what? <laughs> it's supposed to be. Hmm. So then, okay, Tina and Bobby go and they buy some beers from a lady who sells them at the beach for 35, 35. cents a pop. 1977, amazing times. Uh, and then Bobby, so he like opens a beer and he money shots Tina right in the face. <laughs> Foreshadowing. <laughs> Is uh he opens the beer and it splashes her right in the eye. Yeah. And she's like, eh. And then they fool around and they play around. And I never noticed this part. Apparently, Tina and Bobby are playing grab ass and then they actually run into an actual fight. So they're yeah. like two guys like rolling around, like oh, punching yeah. each other yeah. on the beach. And Bobby and yeah. Tina are like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just like tripping over them. <laughs> and Bobby gets like sucked into it like uh, one of those cartoon fights where there are a tornado and another <laughs> character gets sucked into the tornado and they gotta like pull him out of the fight. I was actually like a, kind of impressed by it. <laughs> like some sort of like cloud appears, yeah. like the cloud of sand and pulls Bobby in. Uh, then like Bobby goes and uh, you know, him and Tina share a moment, they kiss, and then Bobby's like, All right, lips are locked, hand to breast. <laughs> Check mate. <laughs> Check mate. Oh, and then Tina's like, you're all the same. You're all the same. That's all you want. And I'm like, that's true. <laughs> In this case, that is true. He has not changed from last night. Uh, then Tina gets in the van, so she steals a straight arrow and drives off and with Sue and Jack in the back. Mm. And then Bobby gets left alone, and he just says women again. And then we go to Bobby's long walk home. Okay, yeah. I have so many problems with this. Like, how far is this, is VanCon? And, like, the, the distance traveled and the time. Okay, so Bobby is in the, the beaches of Malibu. Yeah. And he walks all the way home. To like, like the suburbs. Through the cliffs. Yeah, all the way back to... I mean, that pizza place is in Whittier, which is not close. No. Not close. No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Stanton. Yeah. That's, like, a good... I don't know. Mile, like an hour and a half. Yeah, at least the road at the very least. without traffic. Yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a fucking a hell of a fucking walk yeah. there. So he walks all the way home. Uh, he pitch, he tries to hitchhike, and the person doesn't pick him up. And I wrote, "Well, I wouldn't, so I don't blame them." Uh, Chris, though, in the first episode of this show, said he would pick up Bobby hitchhiking. Chris, yeah. do you regret that comment? I do, I do. I was you know good Samaritan back then. I am not. <laughs> I would actually try to hit him. <laughs> Swear for him. Do everybody a favor. Public service. Yeah. Get rid of him. Yeah. And all that's left on your, your car when you get home is some blood and an orange poof. Well, the, there would be an orange poof in the antenna. <laughs> it's kind of flopping around. Uh, so then Bobby gets home and the van's just sitting there for him. That's great. And then we get the uh, Laurel and Hardy. So they're eating pizza. The Laurel Hardy cops are mm. just eating pizza for no reason. Go to the pizza place and like Andy... So, okay, here it is. DeVito just walks in. So Jack and Bobby are hanging out the the pizza place. Right. And this is when Crown was like, oh, fuck, we got to have some sort of plot in this movie. So DeVito, who we have not seen in like almost an hour, walks in and he goes, Mm -hmm. well, uh, the bookie business isn't going well, Bobby. I need money. And then we cut to money on the table, problem solved. Yeah. Bobby has lent DeVito exactly the amount of money he needs. Uh, and then he's just like, all right, great. <laughs> problem solved. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> uh, but we do get some weird flashback of DeVito getting beat up by Bob guys, which was interesting. Yeah, that was like another weird quick cut. Yeah. But then Adler and the boys come in, they attack him, uh, and this is where we get the appearance of the hidden Mickey. Mm-hmm. One yeah, of the guys is wearing right. a Crown International shirt. A nice shirt. yellow Crown International. <laughs> Even says Crown International pictures on the back. Yep. Uh, and then so Adler and the boys chase after Bobby. They get in some big car chase with the Laurel Hardy cops. Mm. It's, it's It goes nowhere. Bobby almost kills a man in a wheelchair. Nah. Uh, the cops crash into a random car. Adler's all mad that he lost Bobby. He gets so pissed, he punches mm. his windshield and he breaks it. Yeah. Then we go to night. So now this is when Bobby... Now, Randall, this is Oof. when Bobby becomes even worse. Because now he's sitting outside of Tina's house with a ton of empty beers. Like, I mean, there's like dozens of beers. Like a whole like 30 pack of beers yeah, this he, guy's he, gone through. Like if this were, yeah, just him, he would not be alive. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering about that. Like, okay, so he was sitting out in front of her house the whole time. 
I guess so. Do you that think is, he started? Do you think he started the drinking there? He's like, well, <sighs> liquid courage. I'm gonna keep going until I until <laughs> until I have the courage to go up there. Because <laughs> that is the way it seems. Like he's in there. Like yeah, there's tons of cans all over and the cigarette butts and. I mean, he's, like, gone through at least a 12-pack and the jug of wine. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. working it hard. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just been sitting across the street from her house. Like, she probably saw this van outside when she okay, went to bed and was like, I have to close my blinds. Also, I'm locking every door, every yeah. window, and I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. Okay, I Because I don't her... know why he's here. <laughs> I picture her lying asleep at night going, okay, it's going to be okay. You hear it very faintly. Doo, 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 doo. Then you see a shot of the van crashing through her bedroom. <laughs> She's having nightmares about that, that horn sound. Yeah. Apparently, Bobby gets, quote, drunk enough mm. uh, and then stumbles over to her window. <laughs> Not quiet at all. He's like, Tina, Tina. Tina. And then he knocks on the window and she's like, what the fuck are you doing? Go away. And he's like, so Bobby leaves, <laughs> but I write, that dick ain't going down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that boner is raging. Yeah. So what does he do? Well, <sighs> next on the list, <laughs> Sally Jensen. So again, we're supposed to feel sympathy for Bobby, right? Yeah. Like he's just trying to get this girl to like him. So how do we feel sympathy for a guy? Yeah, he'll go fuck another girl. Mm -hmm. Eh, fuck it. The moral of the story, the van. Yeah. So he goes to Sally's house, uh, and now this is where it gets worse. Is Bobby staring through Sally's window with a pair of binoculars he conveniently keeps with him in the van? That's creepy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're supposed to root for this man. <laughs> he drinks some more of that jug wine, and then he walks up to Sally's. He knocks on the door and he comes in and he's obviously very drunk. Yeah. And Sally looks at him as he collapses onto the couch and she says, looks like you need a drink. And I write, is she just trying to push him over the edge? Maybe make him <laughs> pass out for good? And <laughs> I, I, would th I think she's trying to poison him. <laughs> yeah, like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> but this is, okay. So this is what we were probably talking about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This scene doesn't seem real. Uh-uh. No. Yeah. This is... I couldn't tell if this was him fantasizing and having sex with her or because she ends it ends with her going, you look like you enjoyed that. And yeah, because, okay, so what happens is she sits down on the couch and she yeah. says, Dugan doesn't have time for me anymore. Yeah. He's always out hanging around. And then he starts getting flashbacks. Like we're having like, like the audience is having a seizure. Like yeah. we do like these quick cuts between inside the van and still on the couch. Mm. And then all of a sudden we go to the van and what seems like a dream sequence mm -hmm. is like Sally like taking his belt off and unzipping his zipper and she looks at him and she goes you're bigger than dugan mm -hmm. and then we get a sex scene with tons of back tons of ankles tons of bobby and lots of freckles and i write this this has to be a dream right it doesn't seem real yeah this is the way it's cut doesn't seem right so you also thought that randall like this yeah this like, definitely like, seemed fake like i said like once we got like into that scene i was like wait this is this is another weird flashback or dream sequence, right? And I, I had to, I actually uh, ran it back to see like how we transitioned into that scene. It's from the house to the van. It still seems like it was a dream, but then, you know, in a moment, like it goes right back into regular movie time from the van. So <laughs> maybe the movie just ended with, uh, with a scene of Bobby in the hospital and the doctor goes, all right, call it. <laughs> he goes oh, how did he die alcohol poisoning yeah. we found him outside of a girl's house <laughs> <laughs> passed out in his passed out in his captions chair just going hey baby hey baby hey baby yeah the next shot is sally like driving changing a new like new name new life <laughs> and tina just identifies the body and goes that's him yeah <laughs> they pulled the sheet over Obviously, the boater is still raging. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a circus tent. <laughs> All right, the one uh, there's a big problem I have in this movie is that I've seen way too much of Bobby's naked body. Like yeah. I've seen every angle of it. Like I, ankles. I've never seen this much of my own naked body. No. Like <laughs> I, I have seen literally every angle of this man's body, even the bottom of his feet. Yeah, it's that's just, true. It's too much. Do you think that's what his audition was like? He's like, all right, strip down, kid. <laughs> do, you, do you think 
Mr. Crown was like, all right, with these sex scenes, though, we're going to get the ladies a little something they want. You know, we're going to show the man. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will tell us this movie's sexist if we show the man in the sex scene. You can do whatever you want to a woman before the sex scene. So I, this is when I write my notes. I still don't understand how I'm supposed to root for Bobby. Yeah, you don't. This is a movie literally filled with derelicts. Tina is the only rational one, and I'm seriously hoping that her life doesn't end by getting stashed into a basement somewhere or dumped into a random garbage truck like mm. in Chesty Anderson. Yeah. The scene ends. Dugan comes back. Sally gets dressed, and Bobby drives off. And yeah. then Dugan sees the straight arrow. Yeah. He can smell it. Yeah. And he knows what's up. Yeah. Oh, boy, does he. Yeah. So the beach. Bobby goes to his new bedroom, the beach, uh, where he just... <laughs> he okay. wraps that cum-encrusted comforter <laughs> around him. At this. Okay, now, I have a theory, guys. Do you think that Bobby actually slept, or did he just go sit in the sand and watch that sun come up? Because I, he's like still sitting in the same position he was when we cut from night to day. Yeah, I think he was wired. From and his I'm thinking yeah. he just sat there staring at the sun. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah, wired. Yeah, <laughs> He dreams about Tina. His face is very serious. Yeah. I mean, deadly serious. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. And I'm worried for everybody's life. Uh, then Tina wakes up in her room, and then we see like both of them driving around, uh -huh. like cutting between them driving around, and then they both pull up to the pizza place at the same time, which I don't think is a coincidence because I think Bobby just followed her there. <laughs> <laughs> And he's like, oh, you like to eat pizza at 9 a.m. too? <laughs> and I guess they eat every meal there, including breakfast. I guess so. Because they walk in, and Sue and Jack already have a pizza on their table. They're friends. Because this is crown logic. Again, yeah. 1970s in L.A. If you want to find your friend, just, just drive, drive around. around five minutes. Yeah, you'll find him. Mm -hmm. And we do learn it's 9 a.m., and they're all eating pizza. Wonderful. Maybe it's like a, you know, like a bacon and egg pizza, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a pepperoni. Oh, wow. And they said something like, it's 9 a.m. and you're eating pizza. And they said something like, it's a living. It was really, I didn't get what they said. So mm. then Dugan walks in, he confronts Bobby. Uh, basically, he knows he's been at his house. That's yeah. when he says the whole thing about, oh, you were, must have been my twin brother or some shit. Then Jack, so Bobby's friend breaks a beer bottle over a table like he's going to stab Dugan with this beer bottle. And it's like the smallest little, like, shard <laughs> that they could possibly get. Then he gets scared and says he's only kidding. But then Tina gets all pissed, rightfully so, and runs off. And then this is where this movie devolves into absolute fucking madness. Yeah. So she's pissed because Bobby had sex with uh, Sally. And Why would Bobby's she care? like... Well, because he's, like, saying, oh, yeah, I like you. And she's oh, like, oh, yeah. you seem nice. And then she's like, wait, you fucked another woman last yeah. night after I told you I was going to bed? And he's I like, know. Oh, I guess I'm just, what I am guess, I going to do? It I was guess hot. I'm just being logical and like, why would anybody want to be with Bobby? <laughs> so Bobby says there's nothing between us. She tries to get away, and then Bobby, like, grabs her and takes her for the last ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So on this last ride, uh, Bobby flips Dugan off. He starts, like, driving like crazy. The cops start chasing him. He doesn't slow down. Tina's begging him, like, please, for the fuck's sake, Bobby, yeah. slow down. We're, you're going to get us killed. Yeah, we're going to die. <laughs> or you're going to jail, and me too as an accomplice. Uh, Bobby runs through a wedding, almost kills them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Bobby's like, I'm not going to stop this car until you listen to me, Tina. And she's just like, you are absolutely insane. They drive around the Malibu cliffs. Bobby's swerving around, threatening to drive off the cliff. Yeah. He's like, if you don't listen to me, I'm going to drive off. I'm going to drive off. <laughs> and she's like, all right, fine. I'll listen to you. So he stops the car and then he looks at her and we have the conversation where apparently Bobby pours his heart out. <laughs> By basically trying to blame all this stuff on her. <laughs> <laughs> a typical uh, Tyler Perry movie where it's always a woman's fault in every Tyler Perry movie. Yeah, it's you're right. It's a real Tyler Perry moment where yeah. it's the woman's fault. Yeah. He says, like, you don't understand. You make me feel this way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not good with girls, you know, because, like, I don't know. They don't like me. And I thought maybe if I got this van, I'd have sex with a lot of women. But now all I want to do is have sex with you, Tina. Is this working for you? or? <laughs> <laughs> and then she somehow is, I don't know. I write, okay, 
She says to him, by the way, would a sane person own a van like this and drive the way you just drove? And I write, the answer is obviously no. Yeah. Glaringly. <laughs> Glaringly. But then, okay, so that's when Bobby goes into his I'm never good with girl speech. And apparently he's all he's a changed man now, okay? He's done peering through bathroom stalls. Yeah. He's a changed man. And then she says she's just like him. She's like, oh, I feel the same way. Like, I'm not good with guys. I just can't play the game. And then Bobby says, she's it for him. They kiss. And I write, somehow this fucking plan of his has worked. Mm -hmm. Or she is just playing along. And this is obviously a case of Stockholm Syndrome. Exactly. And this crazed rapist (laughs) has taken her for the last ride. Yeah. And she's just agreeing until he eventually drops her off at home and she can call the police. Uh, Then we get a love scene. And once again, we see a ton of Bobby. Oh, Jesus. Thank God. Uh, this is when I, I did write, I know the freckle map of this damn Yeah, kid. yeah, yeah. When I close my <laughs> eyes, I can still see the map of his freckles, like the stars of the sky. And that scratch. <laughs> and that scratch. If somebody were to ask me, which, by the way, they asked plenty of women, can you draw the freckle map from memory? And they go, I'll never forget it. <laughs> 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 the police sketch is just a, a map of Bobby's back. I thought a new freckle pops up with every woman <laughs> that he beds. <sighs> so they drive off into the distance around the cliffs. I write, maybe off. Who knows? <laughs> we go to the car wash. DeVito doesn't have that money. Nope. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> the plot thickens. The friends sit in a van. They wonder if they have the money. They don't. They're still drinking beers, <laughs> though. And then, basically, they say... Okay, so all of this happens off scene. Yeah. His Bobby goes, hey, Jack, can you tell Dugan I'll go race him? And he's like, okay. And then they leave. Next scene, we cut to the beach at night. Mm -hmm. We don't really know what the fuck's going on. No. And Bobby and Tina are sharing some jug wine around the fire, and she tells him not to do it. And I write, do what? (laughs) (laughs) What is going on? And she says, okay, then we got to throw in a little bit more conflict is that Tina all of a sudden breaks down and she says, I hate this van, and then runs yeah. off, and he just goes, women. Yeah, she's like <laughs> beating on it. <laughs> it's fucking packed. This is just like, oh, holy fuck, we only got five minutes left. Go, go, plot, plot, plot. Let's get this going here. <laughs> Ramp up that tension. <laughs> So then we go to the race, right? So the last scene of this movie, they wait for Bobby to show up, like Dugan and everybody's there. uh, And then Laurel and Hardy drive around eating a sandwich. These fucking guys. But then Bobby pulls up, and so now he's going to race, but he is fucking pissed drunk. Yeah, he's done. I mean, collapse on the ground drunk. He's, quote, bombed. Yeah. And he he almost runs over everybody when he pulls up to the race. Yeah, the way he pulls in... (laughs) Yeah, he just goes like, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> like slides the van, almost just taking out Dugan and Sally with them. Uh, this could, yeah, that match could have been over in a very easy way. <laughs> <laughs> I could see him like running over Dugan and him like getting out and then stumbling over and checking his pockets yeah. for any money. <laughs> <laughs> I got the money. Yeah. <laughs> So then, uh, okay, Dugan walks up and he's like, hey, are you ready for the match? And Bobby says, yeah, I got to match your face and my ass. <laughs> Which makes I think, no wait, sense. Wait, does, does he say your face and my ass? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then Adler and the boys are there for some reason because they're like, well, we have Bill for another day. Should we tell him to just show up? Maybe he could set up a light or two. <laughs> he said he'll only show up if DeVito shows up. <laughs> the race begins. <laughs> Bobby tells Dugan he fucks Sally and he calls him a turd. Uh-oh. Dugan loses his shit. Yeah. And no. it's funny because Bobby forgets to lock his van before <laughs> telling him this. That's when Dugan gets out and says, nobody talks to Dugan that way. Nobody calls Dugan a turd. Doogie. Doogie a turd. <laughs> then we get the best moment, my favorite line of the whole movie, and maybe of my life. DeVito pulls up right before the race is about to happen, and he goes, hey, Bobby, I got the money. <laughs> <laughs> So literally all stakes are just kind of like, eh, yeah, fuck it. Done. None of this matters done. anymore. <laughs> fuck done. <it. laughs> like, why did they even have this? Well, okay, because I Bobby didn't hear them. Hear DeVito. No, I know, that. but it's just so fucking dumb. It's like, yeah. well, we got DeVito for another day. How are we going to fit him in? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this guy, he's, he's only in six scenes. <laughs> so he sends up, Bobby, I got the money. 
the race begins. Dugan's real pissed about that turd comment. Mm. Yeah, uh, he is. <laughs> and he's like, he can't even race. He's so pissed about it. And then all of a sudden, the cops pull up. Dugan runs in the cop. Bobby flips his car over, crosses the finish line. Everyone runs to check on him. Water's pouring out. Yeah, they open the door. Water <clears throat> just pours out everywhere. And they're like, Bobby, are you okay? He does his creep smile, spits out some water, looks she's up and goes, like, Don't die, Bobby. Don't die. <laughs> he goes, Okay. She goes, Don't die, Bobby. Yet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then he just looks up and he goes, I'm okay. Yeah. And it's like, you can almost see the look of disappointment in Tito's yeah. face. But then DeVito says he's got the money. The cops are all upset. Nobody's arrested. <laughs> Tito and Bobby drive off. And you know what? That van, fuck it. Leave it. <laughs> And then we get a conversation over credits. Now the credits are rolling. And Bobby tells Tina that he's bigger than Dugan. But she goes, Bobby. And they just kind of laugh about it. Yeah. And then, like, we see flashbacks. And then we hear again. She's like, are you really bigger than Dugan? <laughs> and he's like, that's what Sally said. And she's like, Bobby. Yeah. Uh, and then she says, Tina says, oh, boy women yeah as if to be yeah. like it is all our fault guys mm-hmm. it's all our fault you gotta you know bring it back home to you gotta round it <laughs> bring it back home yeah uh and then the last line of the movie is do you love me bobby and bobby responds with she <laughs> and i write in my notes if i saw this movie in a the theater i would either be too fucked up to remember it or sitting there going what the fuck did i just watch yeah what the hell was that? I think they pass out like psychotropic <laughs> drugs as you come into the theater just to make it more make more sense. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, Chris, maybe the tagline for the the tagline for the poster should just be women. <laughs> They'll get it. <laughs> women dot dot dot. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Recommendations? Yeah, absolutely. This is a, a cornerstone of the Grindman. If, if it weren't for this film, I don't think the Grindman would exist, to be honest. Probably not. Yeah. If I never saw this movie in that class all yeah. those years ago, I would have never fallen in love with exploitation movies right. the way I did. Yeah. Randall, what do you think? Uh, yeah, it was worth watching for sure. Um, I would recommend it, but only if I get to watch the people's reactions to it <laughs> or discuss afterwards. Be like, go watch this. Come back, and we'll work through it. We'll work through it. We'll <laughs> mend is, the relationship. So you're saying, uh, Randall, next time you have friends or family over. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? <laughs> I don't know, man. Friends, <laughs> maybe. I'm not going to. Fire gonna, it I'm, up. <laughs> and just go, I found this movie. It's great, guys. You'll love it. <laughs> Do you like fans? <laughs> Do you like fans? <laughs> You into movies with studs? <laughs> That's how I start most of my conversations in the past year. Yeah. You like Vance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you guys hear that sound? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? V- Randall, do you hear that sound? <laughs> <laughs> something like that, I guess. Oh, that's right. Now, Chris, you know, we have said for the past 46 episodes. Yeah. That we always are 45 episodes that we always go back to the first episode of this show, 1977's yeah. The Van, mm-hmm. starring Stuart Goetz and Danny DeVito about mm-hmm. a ginger kid who gets a garish yellow van and tries mm-hmm. to rape women inside of it, and we are not making that part up mm-hmm. uh, and not underplaying it. Now you can listen to the 47th episode yeah. of Ben instead you. of the first one with Chris, me, Randall, who will get to promote the Grawlix podcast on every episode of Grindman yeah. in the future. Yep. <laughs> we'll always refer back to this one. Unless he this pays is, us yeah, right now, we're going to cut it out. <laughs> yeah, we expect the check, Randall. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, how do you think the van would fit, <laughs> fit in with the van? <laughs> I, was, I didn't know. You know. I had a sneaking suspicion this would happen. But here's what I think. Uh, I think the, as the movie ends... And we pan out to this drive-in, and the van is watching itself in <laughs> the theater. <laughs> and it just pulls out, <laughs> and the credits roll again. Well, no, you see, we see the front of the van, and we pan down, and the van is on top of another van, thrusting into his exhaust, <laughs> fucking another van from behind, going back and forth really hard. <laughs> yeah, it's going... <laughs> And then you hear like a, an awooga sound and it trembles. Awooga. And then uh, the water, you, 
what we presume is water squirts out the back <laughs> of the van. Maybe that's how the van climaxes, the waterbed pops. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I don't really. I didn't really uh, plan on even doing that. I just kind of set it, s- yeah. s- see where it would take us. Randall, do you have any ideas? <laughs> I, I, you know, I was wondering if you were going to try to do this segment <laughs> on this show. Where does the van fit into the van? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Of all the lore, of all the the mischief that Bobby and Devito have gotten into over the past year. What do we think about it now? Yeah. Do we think we were right? Do we think there was there anything that we missed? Was there anything that was wrong? You know, a year is a long time to reflect and to, and to think of, of what you said is a mistake or not. And I think uh, we see this with new eyes saying, oh, wow, we like you said, the rape is so underplayed. Yeah, well, this. I don't think we, we give uh, Bobby enough credit for yeah. the, uh, the amount of rape that he... Uh, yeah. The... the laundry list of crimes that this man commits in the course of 86 minutes yeah. is uh, staggering. It's so... Uh, oh, I guess the, the casting is so strange, too. Like, no offense to that guy, but he looks like a fucking gremlin. And, <laughs> and it feels so, like that's the movie's trying newt. to get you on his side at times, but he's consistently just a creep where you can't, like, it does you can't get on his side at any point in time. Yeah. I honestly think that maybe this podcast has done more service to Bobby. Like, we've we've done more good than bad to him. Yeah. Even though we've said all these horrible things that him and DeVito have done over the past year, I think I think we've given him too much credit. I think we have. We've made him more of a hero than anything, you know? We have made him a hero. Yeah. And now it is my hope that one day a Grindbin listener will either write on the IMDb trivia that... <laughs> There's a podcast out there that references this movie in every single episode they've yeah. ever done. Yeah. Uh, or it shows up on the Wikipedia entry. <laughs> I can't write it myself, but if somebody would do that, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Uh, now, guys, I told you there was one more surprise. There yeah. is a person out there who has the extra six minutes. No. Of the and his name. No, it's a Stuart Goetz. Is Woody Anders. No. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? What? Oh, my God. How does he have the extra six minutes? <laughs> Please tell me. Now, Randall, you've listened to past shows. You may have heard us reference Woody Anders before. He is an IMDb contributor that has written over 1,200 bios for exploitation fans yeah. or uh, stars and movies, and he's written thousands of reviews. He, Woody he's Anders. An, he's an icon. Yeah. He is an icon. He's so a, you know Woody Anders. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> from listening to you guys, but he's, dude. He's a grind icon. He's a grind icon. all-star, and he doesn't even he, need to be in a movie. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Woody Anders wrote a review for the van and says he personally owns the uncut version of the van. Chris, I think it's time to contact I think him. it's time. Like, you were always like, no, we'll wait for him to contact us. You refuse. I don't know why the fuck you would, but at this point, the time has come. The time has come, friends. Yeah. In the next year, yeah. we will find those six minutes. Yeah, in we fact, will find out how Devito got that money. Yeah, <laughs> actually, that's going to be in the the two year anniversary is when we actually unveil the six <laughs> minutes. So <laughs> hang tight until then, folks. <laughs> yep, on anniversary part two, yeah. it'll be Chris, Mike, Randall, and Woody Anders. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh my God, that's unbelievable. See you in 52 weeks. Yeah. <laughs> we won't even do another show until that happens. We're taking a 52 oh. week sabbatical. Savannagal. Well, this episode has gone on. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, this episode has gone on entirely too long. Yeah. It's almost three hours. Yeah. I'm going to have to cut out a substantial portion of this yeah. episode. But I'd like to say, if you want to get in touch with us, grindhousefilm.com, Twitter, doc, mm-hmm. Twitter we're at GrindPod. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook. Find us on iTunes. If you rate yeah. and review this show, we will uh, review your request for a movie. Um, we have been getting a lot more reviews lately. That's good. And, um, top of the bin. Top of the old bin. And uh, Chris, tell them uh, if they want to subscribe. Yeah, uh, go into iTunes. That little purple rectangular subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that shit. Google Play. I don't know what it looks like. Hit subscribe there. If you don't, you know, you're out of luck. You're going to miss another bin. What can I tell you? 
And before we, uh, Randall, do you want to go ahead and uh, tell us about your podcast here? We did, we didn't do this in the beginning, but maybe I can cut this in the beginning. Uh, Randall, let let the audience know if they haven't listened before uh, to the Terrorvision episode. Uh, what what's your podcast? Yeah, hi, uh, yeah, I uh, co-host the Grolix podcast. We talk about uh, mostly comic books, graphic novels, stuff like that. Occasionally, we'll talk movies, um, TV shows, you know, whatever we're into. And we recently went. Twice a month. We used to be monthly, so you can get double the Grolix. Um, you can check it out at GrolixPodcast.com. It's G-R-A-W-L-I-X, GrolixPodcast.com. We're also on Twitter at GrolixPodcast, Facebook.com slash GrolixPodcast, all that stuff. And thank you so much for that nice uh, shout-out you gave us. Lovely. Uh, I did notice one thing is that uh, the Grolix Podcast is a clean podcast. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. yeah. And I was like... Oh my God! I f- sometimes I forget that Chris and I are horrible people. Yeah, <laughs> this is de- we are deplorable, actually. Okay, okay. <laughs> we need to be so, exterminated. We uh, neither, none of us have an issue with that. But since we, Jesse's a teacher, so we have to keep the show that he's on clean. Like right. I used to do another right. show that was filthy, uh, but Jesse's cock, a school damn. teacher. So we figure since we're doing a clean show, I don't know if people come to our show for that reason. Probably not. But we figured we'd give them a warning before sending them here. (laughs) Well, now I know why we will never be invited on the Grolix podcast. (laughs) You motherfucking cocksuck. If you if you ever did, Randall, I I swear to you, we don't always cuss. We do work regular jobs. Yeah. We actually don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, in fact, I didn't cuss on the show until Mike did. I'm like, oh, I guess this is the way it is. Yeah, which was five minutes in. I started using yeah. the f word, and Chris was like, oh, here. <laughs> so this is this type of podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, fuckity fuck fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like I was already like unbuckling my pants. Like I had one <laughs> leg undone in my pants. <laughs> So to end this end this episode, I would like to read one review we got recently. <laughs> this is the highest praise I've ever received in my life. <laughs> really? And that must not be too high. Uh, this is from somebody who reviewed us on iTunes. Five stars. Thank you very much. The name Bobby Batson, January 31st, 2017, so very recently. The title, Makes You Want to Go Out and Buy a Van. And the, the review says, if you love trash cinema, this is the podcast equivalent to that end of that blind melon video where the bee girl finds that field of other bee people. Mm. Thank you, Bobby. That is literally the highest praise I've ever received in yeah, my life. That's great. Thank you. Very visual, very sentimental. So without uh, further ado, <sighs> Bobby, start that van for the first time in a year. Hey, Bobby, I got the money. The music picks up. Da, 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 he plays the theme song. Plays the theme song, and he does this jump heel click in the air, yeah! midair, and we freeze frame, roll credits. So Vince like goes. Cr- I love this part though. It's Vince goes crazy. And he's, I hate you! I hate you! He goes crazy, and then he runs away, and then Jake goes. He runs a little bit towards him, and he goes. You fuck! You fuck! You hit me! Yeah, and then they get in the car and drive the other way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, in fact, uh, according to the director, William Sachs, the time between the film's conception and the film's completion and release was three months. Three months (laughs) for casting, writing... Location scouting shooting. I don't know if they even scouted locations. I don't know if there was even time for a crew to be assembled. It's kind of like let's let's bring the camera to Magic Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> see what happens. In what scenario would this head under a wig work for you? Like <laughs> the wig is gonna come off at some point. You can't be there going, ah, ah, ah. It's such a specific gag. He takes out his gun and starts firing wildly into the dark. <laughs> and he's and he wastes his last two shots and he yells, Brenda, I didn't get you, did I? 
the daggers are taking their annual photo. A group photo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, they're taking their yearbook photo. Is now. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody <laughs> in the daggers. Yearly production photo <laughs> of, of yeah. daggers. Thanks, baby. This is their sponsorship photo for the year or something. Like their little leak photo. <laughs> Every one of the daggers is lined up in front of the ramp, and like they've all gathered in this big, like there's people above people. They're and wearing it's their very best, choreographed. They're wearing their best leather for the day. <laughs> oh yeah, so, they have this amazing choreographed uh, picture going on, and it, I guess they really did need Chrissy to complete it because they were like, "Where is she? Wait, wait, <laughs> yeah. come on, bring her over here." It took us like 20 minutes to set this up. This is the part in my notes where I just started to rant. And I'm just going to read my entire notes to you at this point, Chris. Okay. This plan is dumb because they could have just gotten there early and parked their dumb fucking truck in the dumb fucking spot. But instead, they choose to sleep in every goddamn day, I guess. Yeah. For fuck's sake, this whole plot hinges on a goddamn parking spot that they could easily get if they showed up before anyone else on the goddamn job site. <laughs> 